ideas.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the British, British Junior National Championships 2022. And this next match is the girls under 13 finals between Phoebe Griffiths in the green shirt and Amira Ismail in the purple shirt. Uh, with me today is Casey Bartley, former PSA player. You reached up to about 82 on the PSA rankings. Yeah, 77 actually. Welcome. <laughs> um, have you been enjoying the tournament already? Yes, yeah, it's, it's been um, it's been great to be back here. You know, I played every single one as a junior. Um, mainly the British Junior Open here, which is a little later in the year. But uh, yeah, it's been great to be back at Aberdell, Hallowshire, Fullwood. And you were here coaching. Uh, you, you told me. Yeah, uh, I've been here coaching over over the past couple of days, and it's it's good. It's it's, it's going well. Well, that's good to hear. Players have tossed. Uh, Phoebe Griffiths will start serving the the match. My name, by the way, is Daniel, and I will be uh, be host your host for today. Um, players are off court now, probably getting their final the final instructions by coaches, fathers, parents, and um, yeah, we will be up for a, a very nice uh, day of squash. Only finals and um, the squash levels think that Amira Ismail will win 3 1. So I think we're up for a very, uh, very exciting game. You never know what's going to happen on the day, you know. Each, each player is going to come out strong and, and do their best. It's the final after all, right? Yeah, and for, for us here at the commentary booth, we haven't only seen uh, matches at Discord. Levels were pretty high, uh, but we did not get a grasp of how big this tournament is because the tournament was played on eight courts, I think. For these girls, it's uh, maybe their first time on the glass court, which is also pretty, pretty exciting for them, I can imagine. And we're off. Feisty start. Got a strong start by Amira here, just to settle the nerves. Yeah, she she really comes out slamming here. A lot of aggression. But I'm in the, under the impression that her sister just won the under 11s category as well. Yep, her younger sister uh, took the under 11s. I think was it three love against Charlotte? It was uh, three love against Charlotte Hall, yes. indeed. But I reckon that that will make her want to win this one extra. Of course. Five love already. Five love start. I mean, both players already are playing at quite a high pace, right? It, they do. It's, uh, we've seen uh, nice. three other matches on the, on the score. The one was the under nine category. But also there, you, you see that they're really playing rallies, which is quite impressive. I mean, from my memory, this is quite a fast playing glass court, right? So the harder hitting juniors are going to, they're going to find some success lower on the wall. Uh, whereas maybe you wouldn't on a on a normal kind of court. It's a lovely straight volley there. I mean, do you think she has the advantage being a left-hander? Mm, at this age, I would say that she would have an advantage because she is she will probably play more right-handed people Ooh. than Phoebe would play left-handed people. Yeah. And eventually they will even out a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're at such a young age. I don't know how long they've been playing for. Oh, 
Um, just missed it there. I'm glad she, she she fights herself a little bit more in the rallies at this point of the match. It's a lovely straight drop. I think we're starting to see Phoebe kind of settle into the game a bit more here and get used to um, Amira's hard hitting. Now I can imagine that's that's pretty impressive when you you just come on a new court, on a glass court, yeah. in the final. Oh, nice drop nice. shot, good reaction. Phoebe's just starting to take the ball a little bit further back in the court, whereas Amira's been hitting hard, fast, kind of around the tee area. So Phoebe's starting to open it up a little bit by using a better length. Yeah, no, Amira seems to be a little bit troubled by the fact that Phoebe's coming back into yeah. this game. Closing the gap. Great oh, get there. Get. Oh. oh, unlucky. So almost square it. Six, seven. Unlucky. And again, one of Amira's cannonballs there. Low cross. Oh. I think that was twice on the Double. record. I must say that well called. throughout the whole tournament I find that all the juniors are very honest. Yes. And very, how uh, you say that? They have great sp sportsmanship. Sportsmanship, yep. yeah. Definitely. Oh, lovely shot. Going for the overhead cross court nick there. I think both girls have found their feet towards the end of this game, and you know, we've had some good rallies, some good squash. Ah, and the first game for Amira, very well played. Yeah, I think it's very, it's important for our finals day for the spectators and for the everybody watching at home that the matches are a little bit close yeah, and that we course. have uh, five setters of and course. a lot of um, emotion coming with it. Yeah. So it's good that Phoebe came back. There's always a lot of emotion when it comes to the British Junior Close. You know, you want you want that title at the end of the day, don't you? It's just a it's just it's a great thing to be able to say I'm British Junior Close champion. Yeah, you will be part of, uh, of of English course history. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen the contenders. It's not easy to get there. No. So Phoebe must have just she, she must have played the first seed along the way. Um, I think so. In her earlier match, she must have taken out the first seed, which is which is good. Yeah, that's uh, for everybody at home. We are watching at a, at a at the schedule for today, but we don't see the whole tournament yeah. <laughs> that has passed. We are actually sitting on top of the of the stands, which makes us uh, part of the crowd, which is really uh, really good for us to to catch all the uh, the excitement which goes on court. Again, with another furious start. Fast Fury, she's she's really really a strong strong hard hitter mirror. Phoebe has a slightly different game style. She uses a bit more height, so it's good to see both 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 styles going up against each other. It really makes for good squash. Oh, 
her post. Great shot. Very clever use of her of the positions on court. Yep, just opening up that court again, just making it a bit too far away for Phoebe to get. Ooh, that's unfortunate. But good to keep Phoebe in the in the rally or in the game. You know, I think if Phoebe can carry on hitting a good length and getting control of the tee, she'll have some joy there and, and this this match could go all the way. Yeah, and it's a good thing that the first game I think she was Phoebe was down six one and she came back, so came back. it's like a pretty good confidence booster. Of course. Oh, it's a lovely, lovely boast there. Done, great pressure into the back again. Phoebe's just starting to hit that ball a little bit deeper, find that back wall and Put, put a bit more pressure on the mirror. score. Oh, we'll take it. Unlucky, that was a great rally. Yeah, great reaction. It, it, it really tells something about the, the, the ability of the these very young girls I mean, yeah, the, the technical the ability and knowing where the ball is. The physicality of the exchanges in the front are great. Great touch there. Good hands. Lovely. I think Phoebe's starting to find her stride a little bit here, gaining a bit of confidence, like you said. Putting a mirror under a little bit more pressure. Tied up at 5 all in the second game. Nice look there. She's really using the height to take to take pressure off herself and work back into the rally, which yeah. is really good. And she's able to to look Amira a little bit in the back of the court. Yep. cannot rely on that too much because any cannonball coming from Amira can yeah. <laughs> shake it up again. It has to be on the, on the top of her toes. Ooh, great boast. That was a lovely boast. Clever down the middle shot there. That gives Phoebe a two-point cushion in this second game. That's quite professionally thought of. <laughs> see uh, guys like Asal or see them every now and then use the through the middle shot. Yeah. To surprise their opponent. It's this definitely something that's been a lot used a lot more in squash. Really clever and. Yes. Oh. Fall oh. down. Oh. Oh, oh, lucky. Mirrors tied it back up to eight all. 
nine eight. Again, she's just getting a lot of a lot of um, joy when she's using this hard, straight volley on her forehand, attacking on Phoebe's backhand. Ooh. Oh, well picked up. Great drop shot. This oh, is amazing oh, oh, squash. Oh, oh. Incredible speed there. Oh, she should have run for it. Yeah, she she should have got forward and got onto that ball. I think that last that last point where she she ran a lot. Yeah, I exactly. Think that, that, that made her made her confidence tank a little bit. Yeah. I mean, she, Phoebe, Phoebe was leading for the majority of that game and then Amira kind of came back when she was 8-6 down and changed the pressure, which was good. Again, the hard hitting, like you said, the cannonballs out of, out of nowhere is hard to contend with, but the physicality of this squash for a girls under 13 match is amazing. Yes, these girls are under 13, so that means maximum of 12 years. Yep. It's pretty amazing what, they, uh, what the display of power and speed on court is of course and the, the way they're stringing stringing points together and the po the shots they're putting together are really really good stuff I, I'm I'd be amazed to see what they're playing like when they you know under 17 under 19 girls well I must say yesterday we have uh, seen all the semi-finals here uh, and that was amazing as well yeah. boys and girls categories the physicality the speed the power it's uh the level of junior squash we he have here at the moment is just top level. You know, these juniors are really are really thinking about the game and and you, you can tell that they're watching a lot of squash as well and, and learning. Yeah, but also I've, on this tournament I've seen uh, the likes of Nick Matthew walk around, yep. Daryl Selby. Yeah, we've had Laura Massaro as well. You've got some other really, really great coaches like Tim Vell, Tim um, but Adam he, Fuller. Tim is also organizing the tournament, yeah, so he he's a little bit busy. We've got Adam Fuller as well, Tanya Bailey, and all she's these a great coach. All these people, they, they they all communicate with the very small ones. So yeah. I, I bet they're they're coaching full time on these tournaments. Yeah, I mean the 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 level of coaches that you've we, we've got coaching our England juniors is just top level, you know. So they really are in the best hands, and it's clear to see. And yesterday we were here with, with Lucy, the, the Challenge Pathfinder, uh, manager of the England squad. Okay. And that's just, I just want to say there is a person who just mainly concerns herself with managing talent. Yeah. So that's, uh, we don't have that in Holland. <laughs> we just have coaches and a very small federation who does excellent work, by the way. Great drop by Phoebe there. Little drop shot. Okay, Take so we're into the third game. Phoebe's leading 3 1. Let's see what she can do here to kind of ease the pressure off of her and get back into this game. Great cross court volley. Well, she definitely did not uh, let that second game loss get her down. Seemed very focused. Third game is a really hard game to win when you're two love up and you really have to go all out. That's a great, great boast return. Phoebe seems to take it up a notch here. Really trying to push Amira and make sure that she takes everything to her. Lovely to see the level of concentration when she serves. Good 
choice. Sure, it's not just to get the ball into the into the, the, the rally. So yes, to put pressure on the it's opponent the first, as well, right? First opportunity to put pressure on the opponent, I and mean, she uses it. She, I, th I see she thinks about it. Oh, oh lucky! It's the right shot. You see it a lot with the, the younger girls and, and, and women squash in general. The lob serve is used a lot. And Phoebe's got a good lob serve. And like you said, it puts pressure on your opponent straight away. Oh, that's a great drop. Oh. Amazing rally. I was playing the other day with the Egyptian guy at my club, and he, okay. he will beat me every time <laughs> fair and square. But one game, he just lob served me out of the match. Yep. It's such an effective tool. I mean, especially on a court like this, because the lighting is all overhead as well. It just puts that little bit more pressure. It's really hard to see the ball. You know, you've got a white ball on a glass court. It often gets lost in the lights. Yeah, I know. We have a court like that in Amsterdam as well. Yeah. You're, just, you're just blinded. So it is a great tool to use to set you up for a good point. That's a great counter. Well done. Oh, great Pick guess. Up. Again, reversing the pressure just with that length that she's putting in. But I also think she might be reverting to the, that attacking boast a little bit too easy, so it's becoming a little bit expectable. Easy to read, yeah. Oh, oh. great pickup. Oh, that was the first time, uh, first time I heard the, the, the crowd responding a little bit to a <laughs> referee's decision. Well done. Wow. This is not just winning the game, but this is... Sending a message. This is sending a sending message. Sending a message. Could we see who the... Who the girls are coached by. So they ran off very quickly into the in the catacombs of this squash center. I oh, can't see it, huh? Sure, I think Amira's her dad, and Phoebe could very well be with Nick. Ah, the secret weapon. The secret weapon. Um. Yeah, because Dad's still sitting here, and ah, he okay. was talking to Nick earlier. So he could very, she could very well be with Nick, which means she is in very, very safe hands. <laughs> <laughs> and for just to to mention it to everybody at home again, but Nick will also be joining us today in the commentary booth, so we will also be in safe hands. Yes. Have some of the insider world champion. Uh, top commentary, previous world champion. Sounds very, uh, very exciting. Girls on back on court. And uh, th this match until now has taken us 18 minutes already, which is quite some time. That's an average of six minutes per game. It's a great shot. Great start by Phoebe there. I mean, it's still all to play for. Oh, that's a great line there. Now I actually was expecting the boast. <laughs> She she's been doing really well with hitting that straight hard, either either straight off off the bounce or on the volley. Just down the line to Phoebe's oh. backhand, putting a lot of pressure on. Amazing. She 
she uses the front of the court really well. It's, it's definitely one of her strengths. Just missed it there. Namira slowly running away now. Creating a little gap in the score. Oh, great oh. pickup. Well done. Amazing cross court volley drop. And the fact that she just on the back foot as well is great. Yeah, but she can also came back by a couple of points to make it about even. I think if Phoebe can carry on absorbing the pressure of the hard hitting by regaining the tee with the, the height and then taking the ball in, I think she's still got a good chance here. Yeah, sometimes you just do everything right and you still hit that thing. Yeah. Again, pinning her in the back. Well done. Four, six, everything to play for. I think you're right. I think that is her signature shot. That's the, the, the quick two will boast in. Very effective. It is very effective. And oh, it's quite hard to read with her swing. Now slowly crawling towards Tools winning the tournament. Mira's in a very comfortable lead now. I mean, she's put on a great performance here today. You know, the, the cleanness of her hitting and, and her physicality is great. And Phoebe's also played a really, really good game. a lovely rally yeah, and she has done it before yeah let caught up with a five point difference let's see if Phoebe can keep pushing and take this into a fifth oh lucky Okay, so Mira has her first match ball. Let's see if she can convert it first time. It's a great return. Oh, oh great shot. Very clever use of the lob there. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh well done. Very soft. That was a great there. match. Great match. And uh, the righteous winner, Amira Ismail. Winners of the under 13 girls category of this British National Championship 2022. Keisha, I would like to thank you very much thank for, you for having uh, me. sharing all your insights. Thank you for having me. It was good fun and it was a great match to watch. And I hope that you continue to have great matches to watch all day. I hope so too, but <laughs> I, I have the. I, I think I will. Yeah, you I've, will. You I've definitely will. There, there are some some pretty good names on there. We will be uh, going out for a little bit.
uh, Keishi again, thank you. And we will come back uh, with the under 13 boys final between Zach Greengrass versus Ali Khalil, which will uh, commence any moment. We're just taking a little sip of water. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I will be back with you in uh, just a little bit. Goodbye.
and welcome back everybody to the British Junior Championship Finals Day. A um, little bit hectic here, but uh, they already started. Zach Greengrass versus Ali Khalil. Uh, started in the first game, I just came running up the stairs. So I'm uh, a little bit trying to catch my breath. With me for a couple of seconds is Lucy. Hello Lucy, Hi. how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are the you? The talent pathway manager of the England Squash Federation. I'm just filling in briefly before we find Nick Matthew. And there he is. Here he is, we've found him. So I will very briefly, but hello and goodbye from Nick. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, uh, we are still at the British Junior Championships Finals Day, boys under 13 final between Zach Greengrass in the black shirt and Ali Khalil in the blue shirt. We had a little bit of hectism just now but that was because there was a chair dance going on between Lucy and my next guest Nick Matthew, welcome. Uh, my name is Daniel, I did not get the, uh, the chance to introduce myself uh, to you to the viewers at home I did. Um, short introduction. Nah, you don't need an introduction. People know who you are. Um, yeah, let's get right into this final. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the, um, the best things about this tournament is there's a million and one people from the world and squash here, which was the reason I was slightly late into the hot seat. I went <laughs> nip to the uh, nip to the men's room and... 15 people wanted to say hello, but that's brilliant. It's brilliant to have this sort of event back in Sheffield. We had the British Junior Open here for 23 years. So, you know, Sheffield is very used to having these sort of events and uh, just fantastic to see the courts buzzing again. Uh, of course, this famous glass court here at Abidale, the world's very first glass back squash court. Home to many years of British Open finals, Jonah Barrington, Jeff Hunt, no, fantastic to see it full of world-class squash again. Now, Nick, I was looking back on the uh, English junior squash side, and there's a list of... Uh, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Where's your name? But it, it, it could be like that it goes back to 1998. So maybe something somewhere before there? Well, I wish I could say, well, yeah, my junior days were in the 90s, shall we say. <laughs> um, I graduated from the juniors in 99. So... Um, I'd like to say it was because the results didn't go back um, that far, but it was also because I didn't win one. <laughs> <laughs> but I did win a British Junior Open on this court, the only walkover in the event's history. And who was the final plan against? Ong Beng Hee from Malaysia, who was the current World Junior Champion at the time. And uh, yeah. he's now the US national coach in uh, America. So... Uh, yeah, we, we got the Sheffield chefs to poison him the night before the final and they had to go down with food poisoning. But yeah, just on to this match. I know um, these two players have been following this tournament very closely through the, the days at Hallamshire. These guys play their early rounds at my home club just down the road at Hallamshire and um, two very good players. Um, we've got Zach Greengrass from Sussex, the top seed. And uh, Ali Khalil from Warwickshire, the number two seed, both sort of relatively um, comfortable in their semi finals. Um, Ali had to survive a couple of tie breaks, but seemed to, that only seemed to make him stronger. Um, I've done a little bit of research on him because he's got a sort of world famous coach in Rob Owen. Ah, yes. 
Um, Ali, so he's part of Rob's stable down there, ever growing, ever successful stable down at West Warwick. He's so keen, he's serving there before his opponent was uh, just ready. And then, yeah, Zach down from Sussex, who um, he beat Noah Riley from Pontefract 3 1 in the semi final. I know Noah from the Yorkshire squash scene. And then I've got to mention this one. Jan Shir Carney beat in the quarter final. So I've done my research and what a name. <laughs> Fantastic. I had to mention that. He beat Jan Shir Khan in the uh, quarter wow. final. So, um, but yeah, these guys are involved in a bit of a battle. I think what you'll see with most of these matches, particularly the younger age groups, it'll be the first time possibly that they've played on this court. It's a very unique court, this one. Um, obviously, um, very, you can see it's very fast up the front wall. Stays quite low on the floor when you hit it hard and low. The boast is a really tough shot on this court and can be a little bit frantic, can be a little bit scrappy. You've got to make sure you use that height, get the ball deep because the corners can be quite dead on this court. But it does tempt you into sort of overhitting, hitting the ball too hard because you can get a bit of reward for this. So I know the younger guys, sort of this first game will be huge because they'll both just be settling down at the same time as getting used to each other, getting the nerves out of the system. They're also getting used to a brand new court that they haven't played on yet this week. Yeah. And is um, is Khalil, is, is his brother, was his brother the runner-up in the previous Bridge Open? Absolutely, yeah. So Hassan, Hassan. is his older brother. Yeah, he's also got another brother who's um, in the... Um, the boys under 15 final so uh, yeah very successful family it's a great pickup you can tell I was saying before you the boast is an effective shot on this court Zach played it 16 times in that rally <laughs> <laughs> probably probably one too many in the end that last one sat up didn't it and it, a simple straight drive or, or cross court would have been the, the winner there he went for one too many trickle boast I know the trickle boast is a favourite of the Rob Owens stable it was actually his opponent there that um, overplayed it in that occasion there it is again and again oh he's going to get that oh wow yeah reset the rally love this rally oh that's a shame. A rally like this ending in a, in a lucky lucky shot, a lucky bounce there. Yeah, sometimes can catch you that sort of that that sort of not quite the perfect width, and it just catches the corner and shoots down the wall. But fantastic rally, and I think you can see the point there about the boast on this court. It's so tempting because you get the reward, and both players perhaps overdoing that little <laughs> that little trickle boast there at times. But a great first game, and sort of I think this final will really settle down now. As I said, as both both players have got that nerves out of the system, it's really difficult to to play on a glass court at the best of t uh, times you know the, the top players in the world make it look so easy but they're so used to them now they've played you know a thousand times on there when, yeah. you, when you're playing on a glass court for the first time white ball you know the ball up in the lights it's just a different bounce you know you might see it just a fraction of a second late but that makes a big difference and you know these guys have been playing across the, down the road at Hallamshire all week so to come into a big final and perhaps they don't know if they got any practice time on here. It's not easy. So I think the quality of that game, considering everything, was really was really high. I think getting practice time, the, the, the only thing, uh, the only moment that is when everybody's on court playing the three quarters. <laughs> yeah, the court rats, the junior <laughs> court rats. <laughs> Talking of court rats, we've got Mark Tasker from Abidale, who is the uh, the head pro down here, the Mark Tasker Academy. He's just uh, making sure the court is in good nick. In between games. He does it like a pro. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what Rob um, said to Ali there, whether something changes in his tactic. As I said, sort of, I felt like, from my point of view there, both players had good patches. Perhaps trying to work on that little bit more of the consistency of the rallies, build that length a little bit more, and then maybe work those sort of low hard kills those low cross courts the occasional trickle boast maybe on the back of getting your basics right but having said that Ali went short with the very first shot of the uh, of the game so perhaps uh, he's not been listening to Rob well enough there maybe how would you describe like the the Rob Owen philosophy 
Yeah, I mean, we, we, one thing I'm excited about, I think we're going to get Rob in the commentary box himself later, so it'd be a good question, obviously, to ask him. But, you know, from the outside, and I've been, I, I'm good friends with Rob, I've been over there and um, seen him work with these players, and I think sort of good positioning so that you've got options on the ball, good technique, uh, shot. Love that. Get in front of the backhand volley, one of my favourite things to do. Love that. Um, but yeah, Rob, I think a lot of deception, showing three shots. He always talks about three shots, getting into good positions. So as, let's say when a boast comes around, you show in from that position, you can play a straight drop, a straight drive, cross-court drive, trickle boast without telegraphing those signals to your yeah. opponent. Um, you know, Rob's real stick at very good tactically. So I'm sure he really got into Ali uh, in between games. One thing Rob did say to me about Ali was... You know, and you expect this probably when someone's aged, aged 12. But he said he can be very, um, very athletic. He's a very relaxed character. But what he says sometimes is he can lack a bit of discipline with his game and not sort of apply tactics very well. But um, you know, that's probably only to be expected when you're 12. Right? Knowing Rob, I know he'll demand the most from him every every single day. But you can see his movement there, his court coverage, you know. Some great pickups. Zach had him uh, covering all four corners in this rally. And he's hanging in. Oh, oh. that's a great point there. He really has to fight to, to win the rally. It's good to see. What I love from Zach there. Uh, it's my actual first time seeing him play live. But what I love about him there was he probably had the point run one three or four times. And he didn't panic. You know, what you sometimes see is then the person who's in control then tries to do something silly, tries to force it rather than actually saying, well, that's okay. They're the one doing the work. I'm just going to keep the pressure on, keep the pressure on, and my chance will come. And that's what he did so well in that rally. And I don't think it's a uh, coincidence that the error came in the next rally, you know. I think that's uh, a case of sustained pressure that Zach's put in. Ali under. Now he's digging a little bit in, the, in his confidence. Is that boast again? Oh, just, just out. Out there, yeah. He does look for that backhand volley well, though. I, I like the fact that when he does put the boast in, he's always looking for the follow up on the volley. Oh, sir, before he was ready there, but he took it. That's interesting. He wasn't ready then, and he, and he took the serve. He should have called a let there, definitely. Did it again? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Just a loss of, loss of focus there from Zach. He's just lost his length slightly as a result there, and he just needs to reset. That was a simple let, that one. When you turn like that, you often don't know quite where your opponent is, so a nice safety let there. That was very unfortunate. Tim Vale, who is the new national coach, doing a fantastic job uh, for England squash, taking over the national junior coach's role. He's also running the tournament director of events at this. So he's a multi-talented person, Tim. Obviously a good player back in his day. Excellent at racquetball as well. Um, he gave me a little bit of an insight on Zach, and he said that he's... Uh, it's a great rally there, great pickup. He said extremely talented, but he can flow a little bit up and down mentally, so that consistency is something that he needs to work on in his game. And we can just sort of see that at the moment, just sort of creeping in, right? He was in complete control of this final. And then those couple of quick return of serves when he wasn't quite ready, he lost his focus, and probably not quite got it back. He started clipping the sidewall on his drive, lost his length, and starting to get frustrated. The few little body language issues where he's looking frustrated he's looking out the back at his coach and 
I don't know if that was a tactic for Ali, but Ali started to rush him in between serves and, and he doesn't like it. It's actually quite amazing how two of those small moments can just turn the game around totally. Completely, yeah. He was, Zach was looking composed. Ali was the one with body language questioning. And, you know, Zach currently can't hit the uh, straight drive down the wall. You know, he's clipping the sidewall and everything. Everything's coming loose. Racket goes down there, you know. If you're Ali now, you take a look at your opponent's body language, you're going to just be growing confidence on that. Look, he's trying to serve already. <laughs> Again, he's... he's uh, I even think that Ali saw that, that, he, that Jack was not ready. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean... Could it be a tactic, like seeing your opponent is not ready and just serving? Well, it worked for him last time, so maybe he went for it again, but it backfired there and he, he served too quickly before he had his own focus. You know, you always make sure your own house is in, the, in order, right, first. I love that in the previous final, I thought Phoebe Griffiths, who, who lost in the girls' you know, under-13 final, the other girl who won was, was rushing her in the first game and Phoebe, every time she served, she took that extra bounce of the ball, that deep breath, and she really composed herself to get back into the match, which I thought was really impressive for someone at such a young age. We saw that from here as well. She really kept her act together, yeah. even though she was down, I think, to love. And then she, from every moment, she could have won the match as well. Yeah. It's pretty impressive for uh, the girls under 13. 100%. And I think they're the little things that you sort of, I think you take note at. I think at under 13... It can come. It can come down to one or two small things, you know, the the players. And so, um, Zali just takes that second game there. But yeah, it comes down to such small margins um, at the best of times, but particularly at this sort of age. So they're the sort of signs, those little, those little things that you um, you spot that sort of you think, oh, I'm going to keep an eye on that name. I'm going to. You know, it might not be a, the person that necessarily wins the event. It could be someone who lost in the first round. But you spot something that. Um, spot something that you think that that's going to stand them in good stead for the years to come yeah. you know and it might just be the way that they warm up it might be the way that they um are focused like you spot these little things um i guess when you know what you're looking for and it, it's not necessarily the player that always wins the tournament but you you, you can sort of earmark someone for the future based yeah. on um things that are quite difficult to describe just the way that Phoebe bounced the ball three or four more times, took a deep breath before she served. We mentioned that actually, we saw that happening. Um, I was with uh, Katie Bartley, yeah. former PSA, you probably know her. Yeah. But uh, we saw that Phoebe was taking her rest and time before she served, she was constantly using that lob to put pressure on Amira. And it was, and still, yeah, we, we under 12. When I, when I was 12, I was not playing yet. Start, and I, I, I just started. <laughs> There was no way I was thinking of those things and, or I was coached to think about those things. Absolutely. So these, these are the small things, you know. Obviously, everyone says, oh, so-and-so won, so-and-so lost. You know, the results go back in the record books, like you said earlier, and there's no mention yeah. of my name in there. <laughs> uh, not but in the juniors list, but in the, the other juniors. list, I saw it like a minimum of 10 times. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, they're the, they're the things that stand out to me. So I'm really, what's, what I'm noticing now is... How can Zach respond? You know, we, we saw that real change in momentum halfway through the um, second game where Ali just, the momentum turned in his favour, just almost just in the blink of an eye. In the space of two rallies, it just changed. So I'm looking to see now how Zach is going to respond with his tactics or with his psychology. You know, I wouldn't get discouraged about that. I think that was a nice idea. He tried to play the cross-court lift. He tried to slow the pace down, lift the ball. Yes, it clicked out, but double bounce. But you've got to stick sometimes with the tactics, even if they don't work straight away. If you believe that's the right way to go, you have to stick at it. I think these first couple of points for Zach will be very important. If he gets behind too quick, too too fast, then it might uh, might let his, his confidence level tank, sink. Well, interestingly, so far at the start of this third game, we've not had any long rallies yet. Where we're, the ball definitely, probably, obviously, starting to soften off, lose its um, its grip, its bounce. You know, obviously, anyone who's not seen too much squash before, when the ball is brand new, that's when the ball sort of has 
the most bounce when the rubber is sort of at its best at its warmest now after two games the ball is probably starting to lose that little bit of bounce and you can see now every round we've had six rallies so far in this game and each one of them has been no longer than four or five shots and that continues you know so the game's not really settled in this one um but I think when the game is like this, if you can just get your sort of neck in front, if you can just get in front on the scoreboard, you can create a little bit of scoreboard pressure that can put pressure on your opponent. Oh, and some great gets there. Oh, oh, not sure he got that one. I thought that was a double. And a stroke nonetheless. I think what I always like about uh, younger players but also older players, I think Zach was not sure if he had that last ball, apart from, aside from the stroke, of course, that happened after. But yeah. especially on those balls, they start uh, screaming and, they, and they're putting the fist bump up to, to influence the referee a little bit. Uh, I think that was genuine. I think he probably did think he got that one. Uh, but then, yeah, even if he did, it was... Uh, I must say, I think he had it as well. <laughs> Patterns continue in, in this game. No, the pattern is there's no pattern. Oh, there's that narrow cross court that won in the first game as well. You just see that, particularly on these glass courts. If you just catch the corner, it can shoot down the wall, and it's very difficult to be able to judge which way it's going to go. And so, 11 points in this game, none of them gone longer than 10 shots in each rally. So, quite hard for us in our commentator's role to sort of pick. I think when you're commentating, you want to sort of pick up any sort of pattern that's emerging, yeah. any sort of routine, and it's, it's very difficult currently to do so in this <laughs> match, right? It's, it's very up and down. And in your experience as a, as a professional player, if games like these occur with the short rallies, does that make the outcome more like a lottery? 100%, yeah. I, I didn't like that. That didn't sort of suit my style. I wanted to sort of try to... This is a better rally. I wanted to try and lengthen the points. He's taking the stroke there. For me, I wanted to lengthen the strokes. I wanted to take the percentages more in my favour, where if I thought if it was random, it was toss of a coin, you know, 50-50. Yeah. It's a lottery. So, you know, I wanted to do the things right. I want to get back to my basic game. I want to hit the back wall. I want to step up on the volley. I want to play nice and straight when I can. You know, you see now there's lots of cross courts going on, lots of boasts. Um, even there were the first time there's three straight balls in a row but they weren't tight yet so they just neither players perhaps found oh that's a lovely straight drop but neither players quite building the pressure through three four five shots in a row um, yet so it's very much like a lottery at the moment beautiful shot there I love that because the last three or four times he'd gone cross court from that same position, he actually shaped up his body to go cross court, and the last minute he turned it straight. So there's a nice bit of deception involved there in Zach's swing. But also a sign there that the composure is just lacking slightly because that was thrashed low into that MT Academy sign. Mark Tasker, who's mopping the court in between games, not going to be happy with his sign gets broken. <laughs> Interesting question. And did you think that was a, a double? Or did you think I thought I heard maybe the tin just get hit. I thought maybe he got it. But it might just click the top. So I think that's a fair result. And I have the feeling that the tin mainly, when you hit it a little bit, uh, like, like on top, it absorbs the speed of the ball a little bit. So you would definitely notice uh, a difference in speed of the ball when you hit that tin. Definitely feeling like, uh, you know, Zach's, the last few rallies, he's, well, I've just, a bit of commentator's curse going on there. I was just about to say, <laughs> he's just got his basic game back and his composure, and then he crashes it into the tin. The 
kept doing that yesterday. I went to watch Liverpool with Daryl Selby, and every time I said something about Liverpool, Leeds scored. So he wasn't happy. I was on the understanding that it's, that's a big thing in, in, here in England. We were, we were in, the, in the pub yesterday, eating uh, and drinking something. Liverpool was on indeed. Everybody seemed to be against Liverpool here. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, well, Daryl's a big Liverpool fan, so he was for Liverpool. Most people in Sheffield don't, don't really like Leeds, they're sort of rivals, so uh, yeah. Oh, there's another bad error, there's a couple of those cross-court drops. and It's a relatively hard shot to, to play well, I think, as well. Yeah, so, if, so you think it's not necessary, really, you know, when you're in the driving seat, when you're game ball up, you know, you don't want to give your opponent, it's so tempting to sort of try and win something cheap, but it's so... Oh. Edgy drop shot there again, both players. It's been a scrappy game, this one, hasn't it? So I think real, even more so. Oh, psycholo psychologically wise, that's going to be huge, that third game, I think. Um, Clearly not happy with himself. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a scrappy game, you know, both players sort of, you know, it was, it was a bit of a lottery, as you said. It was, it was in and out, one minute one player was on top, next minute the other player on top. I think that's partly the occasion. You know, it's a big final for both of these boys trying to become sort of national champion for the first time. Um, as I said, this court, not played on it before, it, it can allow the game to become scrappy, you know, in terms of what it rewards you for at times. Especially with that, that ball, if it, if it starts like roughening up a little bit and gets a little bit slower, it's hard to just t change your whole game plan and game dynamic because it's hard to grasp that after a game the ball does totally different things absolutely so if I was in if I was in actually you know each player will have their individual thing that they're working on with their coach and their, their, their game plan whatever that is this is that time now to go back to that you know almost forget the score go back to the plan you're 2-1 up 2-1 down keep sticking with the plan because this game is definitely on a knife edge you know it can turn we've seen already it can turn on one point uh, here and there and the momentum can go completely the other way so really interesting to see if Zach can keep on that momentum at the start of this game and you know just in between games there I'm noticing that Zach's standing up he's already coming back on the court Ali's down looks sort of head down a little bit Rob's trying to talk to him Rob's very animated there in between games but you know Ali's body language is a little bit down there so based on who's you can see if, if you've not watched that last game you could tell who's winning currently based on the body yeah, language yeah true you can see Zach, look, his shoulders are out, his chest up, his head's up. Ali sort of come on a little bit more head down, sort of body language, a little bit suffering. So let's see whether that continues or whether it changes again as, um, as the game pans out and whether it goes back into that being a little bit more of a lottery. bounce there on the cross court they are quite big the Knicks on this court I'm practiced on this this is actually my local club I live two minutes down the road and practice on this court many times over the years we used, used to hit on this court a lot to get used to the Hong Kong Open don't know if you've seen the Hong Kong Open the downstairs court there is very unique very different court in Hong Kong and uh, this court was about as close as we could get to practice we used to practice a lot on this one to get used to that and the Knicks are quite big on this court. You do quite get, uh, you can get a few uh, lucky ones if you just catch the angle right. Oh, wow. Great movement there. And again. Oh, he actually gave that one up. But the shot wasn't as good as he thought it was going to be. I think so. He turned around, wanted to play a back wall boast. Could have easily squeezed the backhand drive out of there. 100%. Oh, there we go. Just talking about that, Nick. And there you can just see the body language. Ali's head's down. 
Zach's definitely got the bit between his teeth now. He's marching to the service box. Can't wait to serve. Now he looks very, very confident. From what I've seen of Zach, he looks very good. He, he plays his best squash when he's on the volley. You know, he looks to volley. Um, and it seems like he plays his best squash when he's really hunting that volley. Which he's got back to a little bit. Maybe his coach has told him to keep hunting that volley in this game. Because he's been volleying really well in this fourth game so far. It's on the receiving end in this rally though. Yeah, don't, don't ride Ali off. I think he needed that one. That is Christmas. It's not even November yet, <laughs> and that's an early Christmas present. Oh, we nearly, re nearly return the favour then. It's close. Yeah, nice. Great length. Just trading blows a little bit at the moment. Whenever there's a two-point lead involved, it can always change very quickly. My coach always used to say to me, Try and get a three-point lead because then even if, even if you lose one, you've still got a little cushion. So I think that's what Zach needs at the moment. He has oh, been beautiful drop shot a there. stroke. Yeah, stroke. So even though Zach's been in control in this game, he's not been able to quite break free on the scoreboard. And Ali's with, within one now. And yeah, scoreboard pressure. Error creeps in. And that's how quickly it can change. Was that out of court? And he went out on the side wall, yeah. Ah, okay. Shot. Great drop shot. Love that. Said about that volley. Very good on the volley. Took that so early. Out. Chance to counter. That's hanging a little bit. So he's managed to get a two point lead again here. 9 7 in the fourth. 2 1 up. 9 7. Much more patient rally here. Close to a double that one. I think so too. Maybe the referee will give a let for it after the rally. It's a big rally this. Is probably the, the best rally of the match quality wise. And it's about the most important one as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Yeah, the new, I don't think that one will make it onto the squash skills playlist anytime soon. Sort of moving in on your knees <laughs> and playing a forehand drive and taking the skin off. I think he's taking the skin off of his knees on that one. I don't think that will make uh, the forehand playlist anytime soon. But I love the application, the intensity, the will to win. <laughs> There he is on that volley again, a double whammy on the backhand volley. Oh. It is so tempting when I've seen this so much in this junior event this week that when the person who's in the lead gets close to the finish line, they just sense it and they just try to finish it too soon and just snatch we've, at their we've opportunity. Seen it yesterday, a couple of it was one match. I think it was a two two point difference every game. It was free love, but every game was lost by nine nine. And then an attempted egg shot that went in the tin. Oh, he's taken it to five. That was a complete comeback story. 
But yeah, it's so interesting, you know, the psychology of actually being the player in the lead. For some reason, you start to feel the pressure. Oh, match point, match point. But actually, the other person is the one who's under pressure. You know, the one who's on seven, not the one who's on nine, is the one who's yeah. under pressure because they basically have to win every point now. They can't make any more mistakes. But you see it, the person who's actually in the lead is the one who panics and snatches and tries to finish it too quick. And it's a really interesting psychology piece there. You know, I'm thinking maybe you need to, as a coach, ask your players, which position would you prefer to be in? Yours at 2-1-9-7 up or in them at 2-1-7-9? And um, they would obviously say, well, mine. Yeah. So then you ask them, well, you know, why are you then panicking? Why are you feeling the pressure? Because you're seeing it a lot now, you know, the person who's close to the finish line then almost gifts it to their opponent because they get nervous that they're about to win and start to see themselves lifting the trophy maybe or going into the shower or into the next round or they start to visualise what they're having for lunch. I don't know, but... Um, especially at junior level seeing that so much this week someone losing game snatching defeat from the jaws of victory well I hope everybody uh, watching at home or juniors and seniors <laughs> are paying good attention because there, some knowledge is being dropped on us right now <laughs> well yeah I've got four more matches to commentate <laughs> later so I need to save <laughs> need to save some of it I can't use it all up in one match So big fifth game ahead now. Who's your money on? Well, uh, difficult because I do. I only have these two of these four games to to base my my opinion on. Likewise. But, but I'm going for uh, for Ali. Okay. Um, Any reason? Well, I think he's being coached by Rob Owen. That's a <laughs> big thing. He's got a, no, win he's no, got a winner in his corner. That's for sure. I think he is a little bit. Um, uh, he, he seems a little bit stronger, uh, like physically. And we are getting to the fifth game right now. He won the fourth, obviously. So right now the uh, the trust is a little bit back in his uh, in his head. So that's where I base it on a bit. Okay, but it's uh, and you. Is that good? It clipped it in. Always goes close. Well, I, I was I was going to go Zach. I think it's going to be pretty close, but I just think that if if he could just remind himself of what was going well in that fourth game, forget the fact that he just lost it just in the end, but he actually probably played the best sort of length that he played in the match, um, the best volume that he played in the match. He actually played better in that game when he lost than he did in the third when he won. You know, so actually. Um, just go back to those basics. Remind yourself of what when you're volleying well. Um, but yeah, there's no doubt Ali's a fighter. I love his fighting spirit. No little skill as well. So I think it's going to be a, a cracker of a, of a fifth game. Yeah, and from my point of view, my, my predictions always have to do with how I would feel myself on the squash court. But when that's when it's two all. Then I would, may, if I lose, I would mainly lose because my, my energy is totally gone. Okay. I'm not that fit. <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, it's always important to get your sort of nose out in front early in the fifth game. So, you know, one point's probably not enough, but, it, but likewise, like we were saying in between games, it's better to be one point ahead than one point down. But certainly in the fifth, if you could, I always used to think if you could win that mini battle, get first to three points, then be first to five points, then be first to seven points, just winning those little battles because you definitely then put the scoreboard pressure because it's do or die then for your opponent, you know? Yeah. Uh, they're also probably dealing with fatigue at that at moment in time, which makes your decision-making a little bit scrambled at times. So just really start well really simplify the process don't try and do anything too complicated like Zach tried to do there he changed his mind last minute really keep the mindset the tactics super simple at this point and just keep the intensity nice and high that was very unfortunate Definitely a good a chance. Nerves taking play there. You know, I'm sure Ali would, would hit that shot nine times out of ten. Okay. 
Ooh, that's a sheer miss. Clever tactic, though, by Zach. You know, he just lifted, changed the pace. It's got a little bit hitty. It's got a little bit frantic. And just that change of pace. And Ali saw, saw sort of an easy volley on paper and just snatched at it. Trickle boast. <laughs> I think Rob will tell you himself, you know, that's such a great shot, but use selectively. Got to use it the right time. If you overdo it, it loses its effect. So clever time to use it there. Rally. Really liked Zach using all corners. Didn't play the ball in the same corner twice in a row. Really got Ali running there. Obviously, a little bit lucky, a little bit fortunate with that return there. But you know, you earn your own luck at times. You make your own luck at times. And like you said before, well, you, you mentioned over a whole game, but this rally, I think Zach was on the better half of it, and Ali got it with a lucky, lucky stroke. But that's like you say, you know, that's you know, that's something that Ali's probably done better than Zach throughout the whole match is he's sort of stuck in at those times when he's not in control. When when Zach's not in control, he's put his body language down. When Ali's not been in control, you know, he's kept fighting, he's kept chasing. Both players just start, lost the length a little bit there, so sort of landed in that service box area, which is a little bit of a no man's land. Oh, just clipped it in. So those, you saw the drives there; they were they were just landing majority in the service box area, and you know they needed to sort of like maybe use a little bit more height, get it a little bit deeper, so it's landing into the back wall. Oh. You don't need to do that when you're two points up. Don't need to do that. The pressure is on the other guy to to do make the run in. What a relief that must have been for Ali when that went in the tin. That's a better length. There you go. Squeeze the arrow with that deeper length. Eight six two points up. I always think at this stage in the fifth with a dead ball, nerves in play. The back wall is your friend. Get the ball into that back wall. And then the openings might come then to use the front at the right time, but hit that back wall. So this is the three-point lead that we spoke about. First time in this game he's opened up that three-point lead. And as it seems, your prediction is going to be a little bit more accurate than mine. As we are at match ball for Zach. Well, I think it's important to say it was... Uh, Definitely a 50-50 prediction. Both players are super impressed by both of them. You know, it's been a really great match. The intensity hasn't dropped for one second. And just great to see both oh. of them. Oh. Again, him in the game. Snatch, the match. He does snatch at it, doesn't he? When, when he when he gets the lead and he sees the finish line, he does just some, just want to finish it too quickly. But I think you know it's important to say that it's been great to see both players battling it out and great spirit as well uh, between the two players. Great intensity they've both brought to the table. Okay, and that's going to go. Oh, oh just creeps out. Great and match. And match worthy of a final. Zach Greengrass beating Aliku Lil, winning Al of Aliku in, in five games. I think he's very happy. The full crowd is outrageous about this match, and, and they should. Uh, next on court will be the girls under 15 final between. Emily Golcher and oh Emily Golcher Porter and Miriam Aisha. Uh, we will be taking a very uh, short break, but I reckon Nick will be keeping his seat warm. I'll we be back <laughs> for the uh, I'll be back for the girls and the uh, 17 final. Oh, you will be. Uh, do you have some coaching work to do now? Yes.
Ah, and you are the coach of? Uh, just got to watch a couple of the matches in the boys under 15s. So I'll be watching the 3 4 playoff in that one. Ah, uh, okay. Well, good luck. And everybody at home, stay, uh, stay tuned. We will be right back. And um, in the meantime, uh, we take a little coffee.
and welcome back everybody finals day of the British Junior Championships 2022 currently watching the girls under 15 finals between Emily Culture Porter in the blue slash purple shirt and Miriam Aisha in the green shirt on the left with me again Lucy Townley the talent path find man pathfinder manager pathway manager <laughs> pathway manager of england squash welcome always a pleasure to have you here thank you and i am still daniel for everybody at home listening um well lucy uh two talented young girls final big stakes what do you think absolutely this you know it's not actually gone to seed this age group so Emily is seeded number one and, and Mariam had a really great win in the semi-final yesterday to make it through to the final. So it will be really interesting. I know they've had some battles in the past. Both of them are on form, so it should be a great match for everybody. I hope so. And um, well, I've, I think we've we've only seen great matches today. Really, uh, really good for finals day. Absolutely. The standard is very high, which is really positive for junior squash in, in Britain. And also good to mention that we have uh, some full stands here. I don't know if everybody watching knows these steep stands here in the uh, in the Sheffield Squash Club, but uh, packed from our point of view. Yeah. We are in the middle of the stand, so we have we have actually got the best places to my uh, to my liking. Yeah, it's not good if you're scared of heights, though. No. And I'm, I'm literally sitting on top of the chair without any... <laughs> so I'm holding on to the, to the barrier here. You need a roller coaster style seatbelt, don't you? Exactly. <laughs> I was thinking about maybe having a slide for when I want to go down. Yeah, that would be dramatic, wouldn't it? Very dramatic. <laughs> High speeds. Make sure you do it between points, though. Don't, in don't yeah, interrupt don't the play. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Emily Culture Porter is Emily Culture Porter. Is she sister of uh, George Porter? Who was no, she no. is sister of Oliver Culture Porter, famous on Squash Stories Facebook group. Okay. Mm. I am on Squash Stories, but I do not know Oliver Culture Porter, but I will look him up. Yep, he posts a lot. Asks lots of good questions, gets lots of conversations going. That's nice. He has some sort of uh, influencer persona on Facebook, definitely. Yeah. With a speciality in squash. Girls are ready. Both. I think we can expect some real attacking play from these two. And some real positive movement around the court. Would you describe the England uh, like squash theory as being attacking or more defending? No nowadays? I think it varies, but I think we, we would always look to be attacking, but having that skill and to know how to defend when you need to is obviously very important. So it's nice to see some of these juniors really getting up, getting onto the ball early and attacking when the opportunity arises, but also being able to, to bring it back, you know, use the height of the front wall and that boast to help defend. By the way, I do not want to influence the people at home and here in the crowd too much. But uh, Squash Levels predicts a 3-1 win by Emily today. But uh, in, in close game scores. I think on previous record, perhaps that's the way it's gone. I think I know Mariam had some injury issues last year. So it's nice to see her fit and, and reaching the final. So I am interested to see the outcome of this one. I do think it'll be close. And I think her brother just missed the final yesterday. Yeah. Losing to Jonah Bryant, I believe. He did. Really great game. And, you know, 
Oh no, he lost to Finley Whit Whittington. He did, yes. I think I've just heard actually he had um he slipped over in that match. I think he's actually injured himself, unfortunately. Now he's on fall down in that left left front corner a little bit. Yeah. Complaining a bit to the ref about as well. Today we haven't seen anything of slipping, luckily. So, if people haven't noticed, Emily switches hands occasionally. Oh wow, I did not notice that. I'm glad you, you just pointed it out. It's an, it's an interesting one. I used to play against someone as a junior that, that did that and it is now I see. is a change changing tactic when you're playing against forehand and forehand. Might come off as a little bit weird, maybe, but I I know that uh, Peter Marshall, I think it was, he had a double-handed backhand yeah. back in the day, yeah, and he he made it to world number two. So it is. It's always interesting when you see someone with what you wouldn't class as the standard style technique. When you see them doing well, you know it's it's a bit of a do you try and change it and get it to be more of a standard squash technique as such or do you let them carry on considering they're doing well um, you know, it's a bit of a dilemma really so it'd be one for the England coaches to work with her and see what they think is best when, when she's moving through the junior pathway and I mean you have contact with all these players and their parents but how did she get this idea of technique how did she get to the double four Honestly, I'm not too sure. I can't say it's something that I've been that aware of um, as to how it started. And I think it's one of those as a junior. It's often easier because forehands are easier to do when you're younger and therefore if you are ambidextrous then it seems like the good option. But it will be interesting as she develops and as the movement needs to be a lot quicker how that will impact her game having to change hands. Yeah, and I must say that when I play my game, and I think you see it on the Pro Tour as well, is that people are relatively more confident on the backhand rally. I am now. I think it's just as a junior. Sometimes it yeah. takes that bit of time to build the confidence, doesn't it? Well, Miriam won the first game. 10-5, uh, 10-6, I think. 11-6. Sorry, 10. That, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> 11-6, and it was in how many minutes? Five minutes. Yeah, like I said, quite an aggressive first game, very attacking, just as we expected. Now we'll see what tactics get changed, what the coaches are saying to the players, and, and see how this second game turns out. Can Emily bring a bit more to it, or is Mariam going to keep that pressure high and, and keep powering through? Actually, I must say that Mariam looked quite at ease on court. Relaxed, comfortable in her movement. She does. She's always, even on squad, you know, putting in 100% effort and, and looks at ease in difficult, challenging situations. And I think it's times like that that really prepare the players for situations like a British Junior Championship final on an all glass court with a full crowd. Because how else can you prepare someone for this? You know, it's putting them under pressure in training situations and trying to help them mentally to to feel what it would feel like in this situation. So she looks like she's quite calm and comfortable, which is nice to see. Clipped it in there, unfortunate. Tell us a little bit about the, the clubs and regions these players come from. No? England's a big country. No, but I, we, we heard the, the story yesterday about 
Reese Evans, who has like one squash court in a 60 mile radius or something. Oh, really? Well, Mariam is from the Midlands, I believe, so there's plenty of good clubs around. Not too sure where her home club actually is, but there's definitely players and a good standard around. Emily, she's really brought more attacking into this game and has taken a lead early on. Just looked it up a little bit. I see that Emily is coming from Wycombe Bucks. So down south. And Miriam is from Stratford upon Avon in Warwick's. Yeah, Midlands. Warwick's. Very sensible thing to do. I think so. Claiming the ball to be up, at least forcing a let there. <laughs> like a little bit of court wittiness, I like that. <laughs> Just stayed in. Oh, great finish there. Players starting to question a few things, challenge the ref. I think it's good to, to challenge the ref a little bit, and to, but it should not get you down, and that's what you, s you also see a lot of times, especially with younger players, is that they get affected by, by the outcome of their protests, friendly as they may be. Absolutely, it is difficult, you know, it's each point is, is almost so important that one decision can send a junior off and you know they can they can lose that focus for five six points and then before they know it the game's gone so it is really good to be able to, to manage your reactions and just focus on the next point ahead but it is definitely difficult especially when you do disagree yeah exactly and referees just like us are also human they yes. can make mistakes they can, you know, it's it's a very difficult job and everyone always sees things differently. It, it is different from where you are watching the game from and I think what people sometimes don't realise is it is very different in the hot seat compared to watching at home and that split second that you've got to make a decision can be a challenge as well and player reactions don't make it any easier. I was looking. Okay, so that's like a pretty big gap she's created there for herself. Yeah, she's really settled into this after an attack, an early attack from Emily and stayed calm and managed to get a good lead. taken. I do find it fascinating how she can still hit shots like that at pace when she's swapping hands. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's the most intriguing about her technique. It's like, I was always te taught to, to keep my racket up. But there must be a moment when she switches, throws it to the other side. 
So five game points here. Take the second game. One saved. Very nice finish there. I saw the ball good, yeah, it was a good finish. So did I, but th this, is, this is a point where Emily is starting to like, get annoyed by stuff that the referee calls. And yeah. she shouldn't. So let's hope someone is able to speak to her and Cal calm her down. Calm her down, get that focus back and you know, really think about the shots. And th there's so much pressure, I think that's what people have to realise. You know, number one seed, 14 years of age. There is an awful lot of pressure on these players. So she's still putting in a strong performance. And I think we just want to see her try and relax a little bit and enjoy, enjoy this match as, as much as we're enjoying the good squash. So hopefully she doesn't put too much pressure on herself and can come back out here and and regain a little bit of that now, accuracy. Now, when, uh, when we were commenting on the British Junior Open, we were uh, lucky enough to have uh, the likes of Mohamed Chirbogi with us, and he explained that as well, that like the, the pressure of just having that that one behind your name, it, it, it's a totally different dimension for, for your whole game, for your whole tournament. Absolutely. You've stepped down with me instead of Chirbogi, haven't you? <laughs> no, no, you're just <laughs> confirming him, so that's... Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he, you know, he's he'll know more than anybody for how it feels to have that number one behind, you know, coming through all the juniors, British Junior Open, and all those. It, it does make a difference, and until you can learn to deal with that, you know, until you've experienced having that number one seed against your name for quite a few years, really, I think it is. It does still weigh on your mind. I'm sure it still does in, in the professional game. There's a few players that you know have put on social media recently how. They're trying not to think about that side of it and trying to just really focus on their performance. But it, it is a real challenge. You know, junior rankings and seeds for these young players are so important. But if coaches can help them deal with that side of the game as well, I think it can only be a positive. No, I think uh, these kids are in good hands in England. I've heard some of the coaches' names. That's quite a big deal. Obviously, seen Nick Matthew walk around. I've seen Daryl Shelby walk around. Rob Owen. Yep, Rob Owen's here. So it's uh, a lot of squash knowledge here. Absolutely, and, and you know, like like we said yesterday, there's a, there's a lot of role models around with the senior players doing well on the circuit. The the ex play professional players coming in and, and helping on the coaching scene now. It is a really good environment for these juniors to, to be growing up and developing through. Great rally there. Miriam really using all her strength in all corners. Yeah, extremely high paced and that's what we expected and it's not disappointed so far. Not sure they can get much closer there, really. No, I think I think it was a bit maybe unfriendly. That she put her towel on the other towel, but ooh, very cheeky ball there. It would have been nice if it had come off here. Yeah, she, she took it quite fast. I, didn't, I did not really see that angle coming. No, you've always got to have a few of those, that, you know, that you can just throw in as a as a change, try and ca catch your opponent off guard. If they come off, great. Just can't let it get your head down if they don't. Taking their time before they serve. It's a good, good sign of concentration. Oh, 
that was very clever. We don't see too much of the counter drop. You know, it's always pushing the ball along. So if you've got a good counter drop and you're in a good position, it can be very effective as we've just seen. That's a good length. Using all four corners very well. Five two, so again. Mariam starting to break away at this stage of the game. We were just talking with uh, with Nick Matthew here and he explained the difference between the two or three lead advantage. That when you have a three, it's always better to have as much points as possible, of course, but the three is better to search for than the two. Yeah, I was always taught to try and play in threes, so try and get to three first, try and get to six first, try and get to nine first, and you know, so on. So it is a big difference. It allows you to take that chance and still have a lead rather than just one point. Um, you know, gives you just a little bit more of an option if you want to throw in, you know, a, a fancy cross court drop or try something like that, like that trickle boast there. Emily's doing well sticking this rally being moved all over the court. Oh, that's a good finish. Wow. That was some, some great athleticism there. Absolutely. Putting in so much effort and you know that's what we want to see. We want to see maximum effort and that's what we, we want from the players, you know. That's all you can ask, put in as much effort as you can, play good squash and and then there'll be positives to take away for, for all of the players. Nicely taken. Not much between these two in this game. Back to even Steven. An unfortunate error there. Perhaps feeling a little tense now. She's got it back to almost level. Nice little lob there. Oh, that's a great shot. Emily is really stepping up now, which is great to see. Got yeah. a bit of confidence back to and play the those shots. And the intensity of the rallies also goes up sufficient, uh, yeah, sufficiently. No. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting to the business end of this game, and end both match. players are, are stepping up a little bit. Oh, great. Great little boast there. 
both so both showing some really great skill in that front and around those corners, I think. Ooh. Game ball to Culture Porter. Let's see if she can convert this one. Yes, she can. Brilliant. You can see the emotion there. I think she's done really well to get through that game. And yeah, pressure was on her shoulders, being too low down. Yep, shows strength and character, I think, to really come back and put in a performance like that in a third game when you're 2-0 down. So really pleased that for Emily Culture porter to bring it back to 2-1. And there's the sweeping squad again. I think it's good that they do that. They uh, Right now, in between all the games, matches, they, uh, they give the Gord a good, good sweeping. Definitely, yeah. So we so. saw some players slip yesterday. These look like two young players from this club, part of the Junior Academy here, so great for them to be helping us out today. Match time, uh, no, not really match time. Yeah, well, match time the, 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 the is 20 minutes to this point. So it gives us about a seven-minute average per game, which is pretty uh, high standard, I think. Yeah, pretty fast and ferocious. I think, to get through games like that. I think so, yeah. I, I once talked with a coach from Holland and he there was a match going on between two high-level players in Holland and one lost to the other. They were evenly matched, but one lost to the other in like 12 minutes. And that was considered by him to be not good. The whole match was 12 minutes? The whole match. Wow. So that's, he said a match like that, it cannot last for 20 minutes, not if you're like a high-level player. So I think the game times tell a lot about uh, playing the, the playing the match at, as such. Means long rallies, I think. Yeah. Means close scores to the end. Both players with two points. We will start to see here who can keep pushing physically, you know, at this intensity. They are moving around the court very well and moving each other, I think, is key. So we'll see who can not only continue their accuracy, but also continue that accuracy under physical pressure. That was lucky. Just a few errors at the start of this game. Perhaps a few nerves creeping back in. Yeah, probably. Game is going to the end moment, the end, end bit.
Oh. Playing a lot in the pickup. I doubted it myself a bit as well. Yeah, I think it's it's fair to play a let there if the ref's not too sure. So three one for Miriam. Well taken there, keeping that ball straight. I think both players hit really nicely through that one. You know, great consistency in their length, and Mariam taking the opportunity when it when it came after putting her opponent under pressure. What I also noticed is that Mariam is constant, constantly looking very calm with everything she does. And I can only imagine that as an opponent, you have to see your your opponent being calm all the time makes it so hard to... A little bit unnerving, isn't it? I if know. You're, if you're feeling, you know, all the nerves and all the pressure yourself and your opponent looks so calm and relaxed. And I mean, she does a lot of running, so... You, and, I mean, also Emily does a lot of good work on court. She really makes Miriam run a lot, but it, it's... Yeah, it looks so calm and so... It's almost scary to, to play against. Absolutely, you know, it's... When we were talking earlier about the factors that can you know, add pressure? That is definitely another factor if your opponent is so smooth in that movement and so calm in their attitude and behaviours on court, you know. That was a, a great length, just catching the nick there. 5-4 in this fourth game, so nothing between them at the moment. Yeah, that was a, a very clear and obvious stroke. Well taken, you know, I think there's a few players that perhaps would have stopped in that situation and if there's room to play, these yeah, players they need to Yeah, they could for something. But that's what we discussed yesterday as well. They they play on a lot of times, which yeah. is, I think, good. It is nice to see, you know, playing through a little bit of that interference. It really starts to prepare them as well for the professional tour, if that's where they want to go, because the expectation and the level difference for the professional games is a step up for what they're expected to, to play through and what they're expected to hit. happy with that point, obviously. 7-6. Seven, six. Seven, six. Just taking the lead. dollar question. Um, I think Mariam will hit her targets and push through to win this one. It's 
it's okay if you're wrong, by the way, because next game <laughs> we will have another chance. <laughs> but I must say, I do agree with you. But uh, I think that the fact that Marion is so, so calmly getting everything makes a huge difference. Especially in the in the last important points, the big points. Yeah, that's where it counts, isn't it? And you know, when you're getting that good width, so it's it's hitting the nick in the back. It it does make it so difficult to play against. And if you can just hit a few of those at this time in the match, then that will take you through to a win. still fighting really well here which is nice to see good reach oh that was an excellent rally by Emily really being moved around the court but able to do that great drop there to, to win the rally that's good to see Emily's fighting for, for everything right now she should because this game might be her last one. She's definitely still in it though. In situations like that there, that's where I think the hand change is quite difficult. Not knowing which side to use. Back to 9-9. Nine, nine. Brilliant. Really gritty performance from both players here, but particularly Emily to keep coming back when she's down, I think is a real, real good skill to have. The ball was down. 10-9, match ball. Not gonna come cheap, I, I think. Oh, and what a great shot <laughs> it to it win is on. If you finish it like that. Fantastic. Brilliant performance by both players there. Nice to see them embrace at the end as well. Yeah, this was a true final match. Uh, I loved every mo moment of it. I think we have the, the righteous winner. Uh, I think Emily has nothing to be ashamed about. She played brilliantly. And the uh, crowd is certainly entertained by this. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's lots of positives that both players can take from that, I think. I think they'll take it back to their coaches, they'll work on it, and, but for now they should both just be really proud for reaching the British Junior Championships final. It's such a great achievement and to put that much effort in and play it in such great spirits is exactly what we want to see. And uh, I see that the boys for the next match are already uh, coming on court. Oh no, he's sent off by Tim. <laughs> Too fast. Now the next match we will see is the boys under 15 category between Ronnie Hickling and Ishmael Khalil. Yep, so both players again on our junior pathway. Excellent players and everyone's in for a treat with this one, I think. Yeah, and I have not seen both of them play. I know that Ishmael's probably brought her off. And um, yeah, Ronnie Hickling probably won all his matches on other courts. He uh, kind of stayed off our radar. But uh, I will be uh, very happy to see him uh, play. Yep, number one and two seeds coming through for this one. So it should be an excellent well fought match and there he is um, I'm going to take a quick sip of water Lucy thank you I don't know if you will be sitting here in, uh, in, the in two minutes uh, again but uh, time for, for us to have a little break uh, we will see you later bye thank you bye
Welcome back everybody, final day at the British Junior Nationals 2022. Right now on court we are looking at Ronnie Hicken in the red shirt, the number two seed, uh, the number one seed, and, and he plays against Ishmael Khalil, the number two seed in the blue shirt. Uh, match has just started, so I'll be quick to introduce my next guest, from yesterday as well, Georgie Porter, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good, how are you? I'm very fine, uh, very excited for, uh, well, we've seen very good matches today. Yeah, indeed. This will be a great match. I think so too. What can you tell me about these two players? Um, I know Ishmael is very aggressive and likes to go for some exhibition shots. Ronnie is a very steady pace, he gets a lot back, he's very explosive. So it should be a very good entertaining game. Oh. We we saw earlier Ismail's brother against True. Zach yeah. Greengrass. That was a really good match. Yeah, tension was high on that one. Yeah, it was. It was a three-two. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's clear that the, the, the whole Khalil family is, uh, consists of talented squash players. Yeah, we had Hassan last season until he aged out. He was under 19s. True. Yeah, we saw him play, but he was amazing in the tournament. Mm. He had so many upsets, like being two love down, winning 3-2. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And of course, his adversary in the finals at that point was Sam Todd. Yeah. Who's mm. no joke himself. Hassan did really well to get through the semi-final of that tournament. How long was he? Two love down against that um, Malaysian guy? Yeah, Ami Shenrai Chandran. Yes. That was a great match. Yeah, that's a very, very exotic player. It was uh, amazing what he did there. Yeah. All three of the brothers have got very similar stances in the way they walk, in the way they approach the game of course. Khalil's now working with Rob Owen and I'm seeing him down there coaching them all for a day. Yeah, true. Rob Owen has a, a busy day here. He does. He's also got, well, I don't know who'd be coaching Jonah, Ross or Rob. <laughs> Likely to be in both. And he's going to join us for a small bit here in the, in the commentary box as well. So oh, is he? his agenda is fully packed today. Is he doing the 17 boys? Um, I don't. I think so. But we have to be uh, very flexible with uh, with these time slots. Yeah. Although I think we do very important work. We uh, we come in second after coaching. I uh, fully understand that. <laughs> yes. Especially against Fimbivin then. What's uh, squash level saying for this match today? Sorry? What's squash level saying for this game today? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking up right now. <laughs> but for some reason it doesn't really, really show, which is... Uh, I want to look better. Ooh. Ah, game. there we go. We uh, squash level thinks that Ronnie is going to beat Ishmael 3-1. 3-1. I think the tournament organization 
with their placement. I think that Ronnie will beat Ismail as well. Yeah. But I must say, I'm seeing a quite evenly matched uh, match going on now. Yeah. I'm going to say 3-1 Ismail. Uh, I guess with the ranking. Really nice. Oh, you, you're very, very early with the prediction already. Yeah. we're seeing here. Yeah. Very typical for first game, I think. Yeah. Players are fit. Trying to get comfortable on court. Trying to get comfortable with their own game. I see a lot of length hitting this game. Don't see much of Ishmael's exhibition shots yet. Try the no-look length there. Yeah. Ronnie seems to have set down a lot quicker than Ishmael. Do you know if these any of these two guys from, from your own club or from playing them? Um, I know them through tournaments, through the tournaments. I've never seen them play each other though, so this is new to me. A small comfortable lead now for Ronnie. Yep. Nine four. Nine four. Seems you run away from this one. very tempting to to finish it off quickly yeah. not always the most sensible thing to do we'll just get over the line and pay proper score Did it again there. Ronnie is letting him back into the game now. Now, for some reason, he, he feels the pressure to to make that point. Mm. Going three now in a row. Yeah, I'm back to to a gap of just one point again. And he was up 9-4, I think. So yeah. that's... Uh, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> He's come back well.
Ishmael seems to be controlling the runners now. Yeah, I think does the fact that he just covered a four-point spread. Yeah. A real confidence booster for him. Yeah. Retrieval from Ronnie. He's in putting all four corners. Both players being very cautious in this stage of the game. Yeah. Oh, oh good. Oh, that's a great rally. And ball goes out of court can be fined somewhere between the fitness bikes that I understand are on this court a lot of times. Yes. Spinning classes from the oldest glass court in the world. Very old. Oh, he's got coming with the bikes now. This could go wrong. Yeah, it's a pretty scary ride to, to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the court expands to a doubles court. And a round of applause. That's a great back and flick there. Just in time also. Ten all. Yeah. Up for a first time break this match. He had Ishmael convinced he had to go to a straight shot. And he flicked it last minute. To, to try and go for that one maybe. Yep. Now it's game ball for Ronnie. Soft handed drop shot in the nick. stretch now in this game it's running oh that was a little bit of a circus attempt it was. trying that, that weird yeah. sort of side side spin hmm. a little bit too ambitious yeah a bit impatient there
warning just makes the way things going up. Oh, no, that's going to be a stroke. And that settles the first game. That was a cracking first game. Yes. Well, it was a, gr it was a great game by, by both players. Both had deserved to, to win it. Yeah, had a bit of everything in it, really. A lot of hole, a lot of circus shots, as you say. Yes, mm. yeah, that was the, the one ball the, the, with the side spin. And it's okay to do it. It, it can be in your, your player DNA to, to have it so in every now and then. Yeah. But the moment was... A bit ambitious. It was you know, ambitious, but dangerous. Especially in, the, in that big points area from, from eight and, and, and above. Yeah. Yeah. You saw it with uh, well, it was not that circusy, but you saw it with Ronnie as well. He was up pretty confident, uh, uh, I say, comfortly on a nine-four, I think. Hmm. I thought he was going to take it there and then. And then yeah. there were there were two, like ten shots, fast in the rally, uncalled for. Yeah. A bit like yesterday, when we, who was you watching yesterday? That did about a seven-all. Corey Harden. Yes. Got very. Yeah, but there was three games in a row. He three was. Games, yeah. 8 all, 9 all, and then he threw it away with... Three tins. Yeah, and also Nick shot attempts yeah. going into the tin. Yeah. But Ronnie did well after hitting them six errors or five errors, whatever he hit, to come back and take the tie break. back on court yep. there <laughs> 10 more of those and he will win this game yeah from Ishmael. Great body fake there by Ishmael. Well straightened. Down. I thought so too. It was so quick, nobody saw it. It sounded a bit odd. And it sounded a bit down. Is that five love? No, Ronnie did not come out of that in between game talk too too good. Right. Here's me also a bit more high T position now, he's up up in the tempo. Oh. oh. Right 
nice shot there. Get back into this game. Well, who knows? Last game, if I got back into the first game, so anything's possible. But Ishmael looks very comfortable in his striking. A very good drop shot there. Quite the reaction by Ronnie. Actually, gets a point for it. I couldn't quite see from this angle, but it looked like it could have been a double. Yeah, but I must say I've I've seen how fast all, all you guys are this uh, these last couple of days. I'm not even surprised that that ball was not double. Yeah. But for my human eye, it, it looked inconclusive. Yeah. Away there. And totally back in the game. Oh, that was a very nice ball. He jumped that ball fast and hit a soft shot, which is very tactical. It's almost as if Ishmael's run out of ideas and when really he keeps getting everything back. Oh, I think he was a little bit interfered there by the just the presence of uh, Khalil. Yeah. Good rally here. Yeah. Both players are really testing each other. Another tight body drop. Needed. Five one down. Yeah, needed to be tight because Ronnie was going to get that. Do you think that was the only possible shot at that moment? I think it was. It was very, uh, very clever to think of it. In such a short moment of time. 
Oh, it's a great running. Ronnie broke his racket. I think it has something to do with the previous r no, the rally before the previous rally. Yeah. When he hit that side wall. Yeah, that was well contact. Rock shot. There was a lot of contact with that racket in the wall. It's around now four game balls. No, I, I don't know really what happened, but I have I'm under the impression that Ryan kind of gave it away. Not only these last two points, but he was up 5-1. Yeah. What went through his mind? Maybe confident that, that he would definitely win the game? Mm, yeah. Well, that was a good second game. Ismail's definitely settled down now after the first game. Yeah, and he is, uh, he's playing a very... I see that Ismail takes very big steps towards the ball constantly. Yeah. And just looking at him is already, I can imagine, quite threatening. He's strong, he's tall, takes yeah. big steps towards the ball. Yeah. He's got very big presence on the court, that's for sure. He makes himself as big as possible. The crowd is settling in quite nicely as well, by the way. But you're fed out, we know. It's pretty, uh, yeah, you have to, you have, for now you have the best seat in the, yes, we do. In the stadium, but uh, <laughs> when you are like replaced with another, you yeah. will have to sit on the ground <laughs> or on a, one of the bikes next to the court. You had the spin session while the game's going on. <laughs> Fifteen seconds left. Do you know who Ron is coached by? I think by his dad. I'm not sure who his actual coach is. here in this game well I think it it favors Ishmael a little bit yeah, yeah he shall be a good chance to build his confidence up last game but on the other hand it's always easier to coach the, the one who lost the last game I think yeah he just needs to regain focus and Make sure he gets every ball back like he was doing the first. Oh. Nice drop shot there. Yeah, good combination. Rally was very loose up until that last shot. All down the middle. I think some of the players just want to hit too hard. 
Yeah. And then they start overhitting a bit. Yeah. Yeah, good quality rally. Both players finding the back wall, yeah, being uh, patient, wait, awaiting their chances. Oh, he's making unforced errors now. So Ismail is walking the other way. Yeah. Drop shot. You hit that very fine margin. Drops there. Yeah. But a great display of speed as well by both players by getting those drop shots. Yeah. I reckon this could be the decisive game. Who wins this and has the most momentum at the end of it. Bit unlucky there. Right a shot. Able to react to put his racket up and just put it into the bottle. Still in it.
Bit of unforced error from me, smell there. Wasn't really necessary. That's a little bit in his game, I think. Yeah. Taking some riskier shots. Which could pay off a bit. Like today, it did pay off. That's a great line there, down that forehand side. Making himself big as well, so hard to get around. Don't quite see where he had room to play that, but... Got that. And that was out. But I hope we've reached a point where the, the rallies will be a little bit more hectic and spectacular, therefore, from this point on in the match. Yeah. Players getting a little bit tired. This man seems to be the most fit at the moment. He's definitely the most confident. confident. To that. Now at this point in the match I would say that Khalil benefits from being a little bit stronger and bigger yeah. at the moment. He has a little bit more he seems to have a little bit more ease in the in this physicality level of the match. Yeah, indeed. He's happy striking the ball a lot more cleanly than Rodney is at the moment. Yeah, and at no point in, in the last two games did Ronnie really get the chance of being the better player in rallies yeah yeah Ismail was very if he's under, under pressure he's still able to lift himself out of it and get in control that's still not over no Ronnie needs to come back from this and but you you, you predicted it 3-1 for, for Ismail I think I did prior to the game I did indeed, so... And this is like the moment where we get a little bit in the prediction phase. <laughs> but I would I would kind of predict the same. Yeah, but scores levels say differently. Scores levels say differently. <laughs> and I'm glad so. Otherwise, why play the tournament? Exactly. <laughs> back on court. He was very quick to get that ball in his Oh, I wanted some more there. Nearly had it. I thought he was down and out and KO'd, but still managed to, to <laughs> press a sprint out there. Yeah. Well, he seems to be more up for this game now.
clearly see that. Well, this is just the perfect outcome for Ronnie. A quick lead. Yeah. work from both. Oh. oh. Grand Riley. Bagel. Six love, yeah, he's he's over halfway already. He is. That'll be an interesting turnaround. Losing the next two games and then Bagel and him back. <laughs> Somebody gave him a right tip. That'll certainly send a message to Ishmael. Yeah, I have the feeling that for this last game, Ishmael oh. really wanted to overpower Ronnie uh, from the start of the game. When he overhit sometime, he put himself in, he got himself into some difficult positions. Yeah. Now he's down seven love. Big contact there, going for it though. Oh, that's a great shot. Eight love. That's a great shot. I don't see Ishmael turning this one around. I think, I think he's fighting for that one point. It's not going to be a bagel. There it is. There it is. Now he can let it go. Twice in a row there. Yeah, that was a good fight from Ronnie. That's an 11 1. Not Some repairs have to be made there. Yeah. Morning, so I've got all the momentum now. Yeah, this is not good for, for Ishmael's confidence, I believe. No. He well had the match almost in his pocket. Yeah. He needs to come back from this, otherwise, it's not going to be over. I think it's going to be a very quick five, fifth game. Do you think it's going to be a, f a quick fifth game? Now the whole dynamics have changed, so we might want to re-predict. <laughs> um, I'm still going to back Ishmael, I think. I yeah. think he's going to come out all guns based in this last game. And it could be too much for Ronnie, I don't know. be interesting. I don't know. I, uh, I think I'm going to go for Ronnie, after all. Oh, really? Firstly, because... 
you you stick with uh, Ishmael, so we keep we keep it a bit balanced. <laughs> no, but secondly, whatever happened in this match in the in the previous four games, he lost two games, he won two games, but there was not a peep out of him. Yeah. At all, he just he's just a genuine, continuously hard-working squash player. And not a f he seems not to be affected by winning or losing yeah. that much. Yeah. He's just got his head on the right place. There for the win. So I'm going to say that uh, that favors him a little bit. I think uh, Ismail will be a little bit too much affected by the by the pressure of this last tournament championship deciding game yeah oh that's a great ball Volley time now, Ronnie, which, yeah. uh, which is quite convenient to him. Ronnie's definitely got a smaller circle compared to Ismail's right now. Ismail's yeah, all over Ronnie's. the court, eh? Yeah. This is what I think could be a problem for Ishmael. He's putting in a lot of work, putting in a lot of energy, yeah. but it's it's not really giving him an edge in the in the rallies. Yeah, he's about to get out of that. Left mark, so left. This is the first time I see Ronnie really affected by winning a point or losing a point, for that matter. But yeah. Court surface, please. Ronnie's done well there to get that point. Sorry? Ronnie's done well there to get that point. Yeah, very well. But he was constantly in the center of the court, and Ishmael was all around him. And now he might seem to me as a stronger, faster guy. Yeah. But he's, he's wasting more energy, or wasting, investing more energy than Ronnie. Yeah. has got to see and notice at himself as well. Oh. A little bit cheeky, but a very beautiful drop shot there. Very unexpected. Yeah. Ronnie's completely in the zone now. Referee there. Yeah. I think it was could have been a stroke situation, but he was he was hunting that stroke too much. Yeah, Ronnie cleared it pretty well. Great get. Now Ronnie is on the running end. Yeah. Ooh. Great point by Ishmael, but he, he had to fight hard. Yeah, he's too well there. Because running, running can be all over the place. His nickname Smiley. Don't make him be smiling right now. We very concentrated and winning the next point. His nickname is Smiley. Yeah. Ah. 
I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm, I presume he's quite a smiley chap. <laughs> That's a stroke. And the point he wanted to hit that, he was definitely in his line of swing. Ronnie's definitely got away of that. Oh. Yes, I heard his nickname being called out from the crowd. Yeah. Come on, Smiley. Rally again. I think that was, yeah, was double bounce. close to a double bounce. Oh, yeah, that, I think that was definitely double bounce, but. Smiley definitely looks. Oh, Ishmael definitely looks the most exhausted now. He put a lot of effort into the first three rallies. Pretty comfortable lead for for Ronnie now for Smiley. But is Smiley his his squash nickname or is it like like his person person nickname personal? I'm not sure. I think yeah, his personality is always. When I'm seeing always have a laugh, people. But when I, when he was called that, I wasn't actually playing the squash junior tournament, so I wouldn't know. I hope that reason why. Ronnie's is all quite good at retrieval now. He's hanging on these running. Yeah, he's uh, even though rallies so long, he's kind of sprinting towards uh, the victory in this match. Yeah, but can Smiley find a way back into it? Totally agree there. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. I I don't think it was a silly ball, but just Ishmael was there unlucky ready. there. Yeah, Ishmael was there and ready, read it well. Three eight. Can he come back and potentially win it? Out of play again. Back to the spin bikes. Oh, 
Cheap hair over there from mm. Ismail. Yeah, 9-3. Hanging on by a thread. There. All we had to do was hit that cross court and think we won the rally. Yeah, worst thing you can do right now is to, is to give Ishmael some confidence boosters. Yeah. Great game. Yeah. And again, I will say it, it's worthy of a final. It is indeed. But he's not going to come back from from this. No. If he does, it'll be very impressive. Oh, a little nick attempt there. And it's gone. Great round of applause coming from the stands for Ronnie Hicking, who wins the British National Boys Under 15 title here in Sheffield in the, on the oldest glass court in England. That was a great final. Uh, we will be preparing shortly uh, for, for the next final, the girls under 17 between um, Emily Hayworth against Ellie Breach. For now, Georgie, thanks again for joining us here. My pleasure, love it. We will, uh, don't go anywhere and enjoy the, r the rest of the day. You don't have any match anymore? No, I don't have any done. matches yet. Perfect, we will quickly go out and uh, we'll, we will be right back with the next match. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see you later.
Welcome back everybody to the British National Junior Championship Finals Day. We are currently looking at uh, the girls under 17 final between Amelia Haworth and Ellie Breach. Ellie Breach in the red shirt and Amelia in the blue shirt. And with me I'm proud to say no one other than Rob Owen. Welcome Rob, thanks for joining us. Welcome guys, very pleased to be here. I've had a wonderful day so far. It's, it's, it's great to see these young players playing and enjoying squash. And it's been exemplary so far, I've loved it. Yeah, I must say, as a uh, coming from another country, I'm really pleased to see not only the level of the of the player, but also the the rest they have. They are really uh, yeah, gentlemen. It's weird to say in a, in a girls' match, but sportsmanship seems to be pretty high here, which uh, which is really nice to see. Yeah, it's, it's been exemplary. I was saying to Nick, I sit next to Nick early, and I just said to him, I said, the conduct of the players, um, everyone's tried for the first and last points. There's been some great squash. Um, and just the way they're trying to play the game, it's uh, it's wonderful to see. You know, I mean, it's, to be honest, you could do with a few of the PSA guys coming and watching some of this stuff because it's uh, it's a lot better. Um, you know, it's very, very fair. And there's no complaining, and it's just all we're talking about is the squash, which is all we want to talk about these days. Yeah, and we know uh, we know you, of course, as uh, well. In the first place, as the, the the coach of Paul Cole. Who yeah, is, I, I do coach Paul. But I coach a few other people as well. About another nine. Very true. Uh, very true. Uh, a couple of these youngsters as well. Yeah, I've got uh, three players here today. It's been a busy day today because I had uh, I had um, Nayla Gillis playing the Australian Open final tonight at uh, three in the morning. So she uh, got a three love win. So that was nice. Uh, Katie Malif was playing the Swiss Open. Just finished about ten minutes ago, uh, which is nice. So she won the final of that. And I've had two guys, two young boys playing here, and they both lost three two. But wonderful games, and uh, just pleased they played well and pleased they enjoyed the experience. And their opponents were very very good. Do you so get any sleep? Uh, I don't get much sleep, no, I'm only about three or four hours a day. There's about uh, 15 hours squash and about four hours racing at the moment. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to this match. I've, um, I haven't seen any play. I, I watched her play yesterday and I've seen her play a couple of games, so that was, that was interesting. Um, nice to see someone from Wales playing. Um, you know, that's, that's really nice, these home nations as well, the Scotland, the Welsh, um, some Irish players. It, it's really exciting seeing these guys play, not just the English girls uh, and boys. And uh, Emily, I've seen play a few times. Um, nice player. She's um, coached by Tim Vale as well as Ian Thomas. She's at Millfield School. Um, I, like, I like the way she plays a lot. You know, there's things she can improve clearly, as there are all these kids. Um, but she tries to play the right way again. She puts them in the right areas. Um, I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to seeing Eddie play. I, was, I saw a uh, match yesterday. Very impressed the way she came from uh, Two Love Down. Um, it was fantastic, really, seeing from Two Love Down, winning 3-2. Well, girls are ready. Game starts. And we're off.
both the girls really seem to come out of firing. Great rally to start there, both in their length. Bit of cat and mouse, but that's about a 15 shot rally. Um, sounding each other out a little bit, um, mainly hitting the back wall, which is good to see. Both girls probably a little bit edgy here to start with, understandably. It's a, it's a huge final. And it's a very unfortunate miss, but a great rally prior to that. Played off the wrong foot there. Um, she would have hit the wall back to herself, so it was the wrong shot selection there. She should have lifted out, obviously. Compared to that one where she was on the correct foot and she had all four corners to hit at. Um, and she hit any corner there and very difficult rally to cover that. Good shot there. Nice lob serve. <coughs> Nearly executed perfectly. Again, there's a good example of you can hit that back wall. The ball does die in the back of the court. So important this, uh, this court to actually hit the back corners. Get the ball fading away is very, very important. For you are the, uh, the attention points when you look at young players like these? Look, I mean, do you know what I'm looking at most of all? A lot of his attitude, um, how they play. Wonderful drop shot there again. Much better in the position. There's a big open space. She's hit it quite simply there. Straight drop. Um, but I'm, I'm looking, for, obviously I'm looking a little bit technique, but they can all improve their technique. Um, Ellie here's got a nice technique, very neat. I like the way she moves. Um, and Amelia, I think, has got a lot of work to do on her, uh, sorry, Amelia has got a lot of work to do on her technique. Um, but she's putting the ball in the right areas. Um, good national intensity. I'm always looking for the intention of these players. Um, do they volley? Um, uh, imagination, what sort of imagination they've got? They've got they see different shots the way they look at the game. So there's, there's probably 10 things I'm looking for without even realising it. Good lift under pressure there. She moves well, Ellie. You know, I'm very impressed the way she moved. I watched her yesterday and uh, some nice movements. I mean, she could probably get herself fitter, but I'm sure all the girls get themselves a little bit fitter. But um, you know, really impressed. She's nice and smooth around the court. Um, and again, that's a good rally, a good finish. She set it up very nicely. It's nice to see people hitting winners the back of the court, not just the front of the court. Drop there. Well, it hit the sidewall first. So I don't think she was quite intending that, but I mean, the, the uh, concept and was, was the right thought process um, to put the ball in short. Not quite hit the back wall here, uh, Ellie. She's just got a fraction short of length. Um, interestingly, the ball doesn't seem quite as quick as the ball in the last match. Obviously, the girls aren't hitting it quite as hard, um, but it's it's not quite running through to the back and saying and ping around. Looks a little bit deader to me. And these balls do vary, and they do vary a lot from match to match. Um, again here, that's four balls alone, not one ball hit the, hit the back wall. So they need to be lifting it slightly higher on the front wall, or hitting it harder, one of the two. Yeah, and I can imagine that the, the temperature here now that we have a full full stance right in front of us can also like, influence the, the the way the ball bounces on the front wall. It does, yeah, of course. When you, know, when you get it warmer, more people in here, the ball tends to be bouncer, but that, that isn't the case here. This ball looks very dead. Um, it looks very, very dead. It's staying very short and it's staying very deep. Again, I like that lob serve. She just slightly missed it until it's gone to the back wall, but I like the way she's going to do that, uh, Amelie. Good width there, perfect width. And I love to see that. I mean, that's, that's the sign of a top class player, hitting that sort of width deep and just a simple winner. Again, there, just exactly what I mean, that serve again. I've emphasised that a couple of times now, and that one was perfect. Service winner, you don't see that very often. Volley that, just that ball off. Mm. 
She's trying to cut a lot of, ball, uh, a lot of balls off Amelie, which is a uh, really good sign. I always look for that in young players, especially the, the young ladies. Um, she's trying to play at a good intensity and a good pace. Good lift there. Reset the rally out of trouble. She's trying to do the right thing at the right time here, Ellie. Um, you know, she's, she's trying hard. She may be a little bit tired from yesterday and, and just needs uh, her legs a little bit, I suspect. And again, that was the wrong shot. She should be lifting that. She's trying to hit hard out of trouble there, and that should be a cross court lift. Give herself time to get back onto the ball. We've got the wolf approaching now, so he'll have a, some more insight on <laughs> what's going on. He's smiling, those teeth are coming out. He's just looking at his notes. But it's all in that computer brain of his, so don't worry about that. He doesn't need to read anything. <laughs> that's, again, that's a beautiful serve. That's two winners on the serve. Um, you know, that's something I, I was talking about earlier, and she's now got a range, a slightly deader ball, and she's actually hit two winners, outright winners on serve, which is, is brilliant, and it's a lesson to all juniors that. You can actually win a lot of points on the service. I mean, I remember Nick is sitting next to me now. He had one of the best serves in squash. He had a great serve. He, he varied it. He served that. He served the lob serve. And it was that attention to detail that we're looking for. Um, I'm sure Nick says to all his players, talks about the serve. Um, I talk about four or five serves. Tim Bell is talking, uh, talking to Amelie now. Um, he's been coached for a number of years, along with Ian Thomas at Millfield. Um, he's obviously done a good job with a lot of these juniors. He's produced a number of juniors uh, down in that area. Um, he looks pretty animated. He's doing a lot of talking. She's nodding, so I presume she agrees, which is always helpful as a coach. Most of my coaches shake their head, my pupils shake their head, you see. Welcome to uh, Nick Matthew. He's just uh, just putting his headphones on. Afternoon, Nick. How are we doing? All right. Yeah, I know you've done a lot of matches so far and you've enjoyed the squash. Whereas I was just saying earlier, how impressed we've been with the sort of exemplary sort of fair play and the sportsmanship we've seen. Um, and just talking about the squash, really, Nick. No, we're not talking about decisions, really. Just that intensity that everyone's brought to every match. I think it's been consistent across the board. Um, but that positive intensity, it's not yep. been sort of directed at your opponent or yep. the refs. I think currently in squash we're talking too much about that sort of, uh, the wrong sort of intensity, perhaps. Absolutely. So it's been Absolutely. all been channeled. Uh, it's all been channeled in the right way across every match I've seen so far. Um, but yeah, apologies for stepping into the hot seat late there. We had, uh, I thought it was fantastic for the tournament, ITV Yorkshire are just filming their evening bulletin from the tournament, sort of showcasing squash. So Look forward to that, Nick. What time's that on? Um, it's on um, they said it's not a definite time slot because it depends on the rugby league, I think, what time that finishes, but it will be on after the rugby league okay. tonight. Something to look forward to, the bit of squash and roll thrown in, hopefully. Yeah, some of the matches. Fantastic that they've obviously heard so much about the event and uh, want to showcase their evening bulletin. So, give me a brief summary of the first game, then, uh, Rob. First game, uh, Amelie got, got uh, she got in front really a little bit and uh, she looked a little bit sluggish actually, Ellie. I thought maybe a hangover from the 3 2 yesterday. She had a very tough match. She wasn't quite fond of that ball. Interesting, Nick, I was saying to uh, people who are listening that the this ball certainly a little bit deader than the ball when we watched the match for. Clearly the kids were hitting a bit harder than your boys. Yeah. But it does look a lot better, a deader, this ball. Yeah, it does. The, I think it's a real... Well, it um, dropped off. It's a real um, sort of signature of this court that the ball is usually lightning in the beginning of the match and then it softens off about sort of halfway through the second or third game. And yeah, well, this was dead to start with. Much deader to start with. I mean, you can see it's not... If you don't hit the back wall here, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, the court's really lengthened out. Um, and Amelie just managed to get in front. She's, she's hitting a better lane. She hit two lob serve winners, which you'd have loved in the first game, you know, which was a signature of yours, that great serve you had. The amazing thing about Amelie, I think we um, we see that a lot with juniors sort of after lockdown, is that you, you see them at one age and then they come back and see them at another. And, and she was really small and slight when I, when I last yeah. saw her. And she's grown about a foot and she's really tall now, really yeah. looking strong in the middle of the court. But yeah. nice to see her still using that height because that was always yeah. sort of something that was. Um, a signature of hers. I mean, got onto that one early, used the movement yeah. onto that one, but I love how she mixes it at the height. That's the one thing I've noticed with her. One of the things I like with Emily, and it sounds very uh, very simple, but she actually she just hits the space. So she puts the ball their opponent isn't. Um, she's constantly trying to hit the ball in a corner. Um, so it doesn't always get there in the right way. And, you know, technically I think she can improve in various areas, but she's, she's just trying to do the right thing all the time. Um, she's got a very good squash brain, I'd say. Um, real hope for the future. 
Absolutely. I've noticed, uh, I know you're a, um, a big man for your research, and I know you watched these two play in their semi finals last night. Um, if you had been coaching someone against these two, what would be a sort of thing that stood out as being big strengths for both players? Look, I, 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 thought, I thought Ellie did, he did very, very well to win that match last night. She was tough, but I'd have been, I'd have been trying to get in front of her, for sure, um, get her in the back corners, and then just put that quick short ball in, which, uh, which I think uh, Amory's done really well. I think Ellie hasn't got, uh, hasn't got enough length. I think she's got to get pinned, particularly in uh, Amelie's forehand, pin her in the back forehand corner, back right. Um, her coach, I'm sure, is saying that to her, but she's clearly a lot weaker back right, uh, and I've hardly seen the ball go back right, really. Um, so she hasn't really exposed those sort of frailties. And that's where you're going to a bit more height in Samley as well. Get the ball in the air on this court because it's so dead. Uh, and everyone struggles in the air anyway. Yeah, you saw there that boast off the return of serve. It's a, my dad said in the juniors, best shot in squash or worst shot in squash, depending on how you play it. And she obviously played that one very well. Yep. But it's been, you can see it, it sort of teases you into a shot. false sense of security, this court, where yep. you just think, because you get yep. the reward for that boast, it does whip round really yep. quick, stays short. You can overplay it, can't you? You can, but I, I think the, the kids, it's very easy to look at the short winners. But actually, you know, like yourself, it's, what we want to be looking at is winners to back the court as well. Um, like like, that, like that, exactly yeah. there, my point. You know, that was a beautiful length. Um, and she's not going to make an error doing that. Where if she goes short in the wrong time, she, there's always that chance of making an unforced error. Yeah, I thought in that last final, probably a bit of a, a nervous start. I just spoke to uh, the lads there in the change room. They said they both don't think either of them volleyed in the first game because they were seeing the ball a bit late. But then I thought the length work of both players was fantastic yeah, as the ball dropped off. Yeah, I thought Emily was very good like there. I think she's volleying pretty well. She's gone in front. Um, interesting little thing I noticed with uh, Ellie serve. She's moving and she's playing it quite a lot. Which, and she actually sort of goes forward and back to tee. Um, so I think she starts the long position for the serve. Look how far she is to the sidewall now, Nick. Mm. Uh, why do you do that? Then she moves forward, now look, there she goes back. No one else has mentioned that, but it's a very strange movement, that, because really she starts further back and go towards the machine until you want to. Well, no um, school, that one again, if that had have gone Look at this now, she where she's starting. If I was her opponent, I'd be stepping there, playing a quick volley down the wall, yeah. and she's too far forward. Yeah. So that's something that you know, I picked up straight away from watching yesterday. Only a little thing, but I mean, obviously, it's, that's, that's unlucky. Right idea. there. Well, your weight's going backwards there, isn't it? It's a good spot, and that's why yeah. you're, you're the uh, <laughs> the tactical master. But it was just um, a little thing. Like, yeah. And again, like, even even uh, Amelie there went forward and back, and I've always been a big one looking at those little movements. Um, there's just no need to go forward and back. And also, why are you moving when you hit the serve? Yeah. Um, you know, it's the one time you get as much time as you want to play your shot. Watch here again. I mean, obviously, unfortunately, everyone's going to be watching this serve now um, to see what she does. Um, but you'll see again. Look, there you go. Right to the side. Well, that's it. So we get further over. No, we can't. And then bang, forward and back. Um, rather than usual. Um, hopefully she'll listen to this afterwards and say, well, yeah. I'm you definitely that. thrashed at a couple of return of serves there, forced it. Yeah. But I'm not sure with with Ellie's weight going back into her heel sort of on the tee, she might not have got both of those, whereas no. they should have been balls that she was sort of yeah. ready to counter. But again, we've had a decision this, this match. It's just been nice, clean flying squash, Nick. Referee hasn't done a decision, that's a beautiful length. Everyone's doing an R, that's a perfect length. She said sorry, which now makes me think she didn't mean to do that, which is a bit unfortunate, so I was hoping that's a perfect width. That's probably that poor boast, you're talking about Nick at the wrong time. Yeah. Got away with that one, I mean, don't get fooled there, that was a poor boast, and Ellie didn't make the most of it, and then they play, she, she played the drop on the wrong leg and got stuck there. You look for patterns, don't you? And um, one thing I've noticed is whenever either of these two are going short, it doesn't get the quality, it's just getting yeah. countered yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think they'd be better off finding that extra ball to the back and waiting yeah. for the right opportunity to go short. Yeah, I mean, that was the wrong shot from Amelie. There was a, um, from, uh, Amelie sorry, there's a simple straight drop or straight dive down the wall. But well done to Ellie for winning that game. She's come back strong there. Um, and she looks like she's moving better now as well to me. Just flying around the court would be better. Well, there's, no, there's no doubt she's a fighter. You look at her previous results in this tournament. You know, even the quarterfinal was a tough three-one against Megan Light. Semi-final, yeah. she came back from two love down against Charlie McCrone, yeah. who's a very diligent player, coached by Laura Massaro, yeah. who obviously know very well. And you know, she's certainly one of those players that even if you are on top of her, you can't take, you can't switch off for a moment, can no, she? Because no. she, she's a fighter. I'd say how many lost her focus there, her concentration, a fraction, and she was straight in her, she was all over her. Um, she made a few unforced errors, but part of that was the fact that Ellie got her length, got the ball to the back of the court, and actually, I think she increased the intensity there, as you said. She got onto the ball a little bit quicker, hit the ball a bit harder, and all of a sudden, Amelie looked rushed. 
She needs to calm down a bit now, get her length. I'm sure Tim's saying to just use the height a bit more, take your time and just push forward. Her tee position went a little bit deep there as well, Nick, I think. Yeah, I spoke to Tim about Amelie this morning and he said when she's playing well, big strength of hers is exactly like you just said. She steps forward and she hunts the volley really well. Yeah. So I think in moments like this one, it is going back to that, go yep. back to those strengths. Yeah. Yeah, go back to her strengths and not worrying too much about what uh, Ellie's doing, but just concentrate on what she's doing, you know, make sure that she's playing to her strengths. Um, you know, Ellie played well there, but she should have comps in the first game. If she plays well, she can win the match. Um, and obviously Ellie will be seeing exactly the same. Um, she's come out here, she looks like she's firing. I like, I love that Ellie, you know, she looks really fired up, she looks feisty. Um, you know, she's on it, she's in a, in a good way though, Nick, you know, she's not looking to get in the way or anything, she's looking to play the intensity and just get on with it. It's, it's, a, it's a great match really so far, isn't it? Yeah, is this, do you think is this where um, that bit of experience in finals uh, comes through? I noticed that Amelie has twice won this title before uh, at younger age groups, whereas this is Ellie's first ever final on this stage, so... A little bit of experience, perhaps, yeah. I think, I, I think 100%, now. but I think there's also a natural thing with that. Uh, Nick, and you can see from Ellie the way she's playing, she's handling it really well. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't know this was her first final. No, um, no. this looks like she could play three or four finals. She looks completely at home in this course. There's a lot of people watching, just as I say that, she does that. It's always the, um, the <laughs> we were doing that earlier. We've had, we? a few we've of those. had a few of those today, but um, no, she's handled it really well. I mean, I've been really impressed. I mean, she's got the other thing, she's, if you look at it, she's got a good, solid technique. So, you know, when you're under pressure, that's always going to stand pretty strong. I mean, you know, the racket's up pretty quick there, Nick. It's nice and straight, you know, backhand as well. Um, you know, it's a very solid technique. There's not much going wrong there. That's a careless. She's just flattened that little bit. She's come over the top of it and her, her forearms are taken and she's hit that too far in front of her into the tin. A few errors. We, we said she wants to get on the volley, but she doesn't need to yeah. force it on the volley, yeah. does she? I think just purely the earliness that she's taking it, she can afford to play with the margin. She can afford That's to play right. an extra length, yeah. Um, because you know she's you certainly crashed a few into the the top of the tin where yeah. they would have been winners if they'd have been sort of two foot up on the the full yeah, wall. exactly. And she hasn't maybe moved her feet in a couple of these balls. I mean that's a careless error. That you can't afford that at this point. Um, you know you can't afford to be boasting in the tin after after a careless mistake. She needs to put a long rally in here. I'd say. So obviously it's produced some good players, don't they, in Wales? I know like David Evans, obviously the, the Welsh national coach, um, supported by like I saw Greg Tippins in, in Ellie's corner, who's a former Welsh international, Nick Burt as well. Um, and they've got um, obviously Archie Turnbull in the boys under seventeen final to follow and they had Reese Evans in the under nineteens yeah. yesterday, so good see some players still coming through it, from Wales. Yeah, it's fantastic, Nick. You, you missed out my pal uh, Joel Macon as well of course, um, who's uh, <laughs> Who's the best Welsh player at the moment? He's Talking about juniors, obviously, at that moment. No, sorry, OK. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but all the way through, I mean, when I played a guy called Adrian Davis, that yeah. there's been some amazing uh, Welsh players, you know, coming through for years, really. It's incredible, but they, they keep doing it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love to see the Scottish guys coming through. Yeah, you know, Goffey, the Wizard, David all these people. David Evans, yeah. A really, really high standard. Tesney as well, though. Tesney's yeah. still doing very well. Yeah, it's we good to see a resurgence of her form last yeah. week, wasn't it, Grasshopper? We, we can just keep going these Welsh yeah. guys. I mean, it's, uh, and somehow, by hook or by crook, they produced a few more players in Scotland. Um, and the home, obviously, but it's just nice to see the home countries involved. And um, I love, like you, I love seeing players from all the, all the home countries doing well. Um, so seeing someone like Ellie should be, is brilliant. That's a nice little stretch there. A little bit of a um, front court game there, wasn't it? There, it was that yeah. rally. It's got a little bit scrappy, Nick. Maybe I'd say, would you? A little bit, yeah. Just lost the structure I'd a little bit. Is it saying it? You'd often think to what you would be saying to the player if this was your player, don't you? If you're uh, sat in the hot seat, if you are, yeah. if you like, as we are now, and certainly I'd be saying to both of them, look, at the moment it's a little bit of a lottery as to who wins. You know, it's a little bit toss of the coin stuff, isn't it? You yeah, know, this is um, looking bank 50-50, you're right. Yeah, and you'd be sort of trying to, I know you, you, you always refer to things in your odds, Rob, with uh, your sort of professional career, but... Um, they both want to take the odds into their favour a little bit more, don't they? By saying, yeah. right, how can we get the structure? How can we turn it to, from a 50-50 to a 70-30 kind of situation? Yeah, look, I'm looking at this now, and I've got it even uh, each or two. Um, bookmaker go five ticks each or two, of course, because um, they're, they're a little percentage that I don't uh, rudely take. Um, but, um, look, I mean, it's it, this match now is a critical period, I think, because it's so, so important these next three or four points to take control of the match. 
that's a tricky one there, but uh, yeah. Amelie, Amelie did move backwards rather than into the ball or across. Yeah. If she'd moved forward or, or across, I think she could have got a stroke there. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. No, that there. I thought I've not had it either. Past her. No. She was off balance. She let it go past her. She had a chance earlier. Good serve. That's nice. I like that. And you can just see Ellie here. Her body language looks really good to me. Yeah. Nick. Really positive, pumped up. It's the only thing that Ellie's the, the, um, been the more consistent player here in terms of, you know, if you look at her, Amelie is very up and down. You know, when she's playing her best squash, she's probably marginally the stronger player. Yeah, I'd agree but that also, agree. also, when she's not playing her best squash, she's the one making the mistakes, whereas Ellie's staying consistent yeah. and in big yeah. finals, that's kind of uh, can be crucial when nerves play a big when big and role. This is where I refer to that technical ability. She looks really solid a swing. That's a nice little drop shot there. Um, she's got some nice structure. She does hit the wall really well there, so that's a perfect width again, Nick. Great length, hit the side wall and just died in the back court. And she certainly she thoroughly deserves this 9-6 lead. She's thriving on her role as the underdog as well. Yep. She, she uh, is, yeah. Amelie's probably the favourite. Lovely lift there, Nick. She's, her confidence is growing and growing as well. That's a horrendous drop shot there. Again, I don't mind she tried to volley that then. You know, it was a mistake. At least she's trying to volley the ball. There's that intention in yeah, there to volley. The intention to volley, it was dipping on it, wasn't it? To go it short, dipping. probably one of those just to control the length on the volley and hold the centre position and, and look to go again. But again, that was completely the right shot. That was the right shot. As you said earlier, though, if that had been a foot up, it still probably would have been a winner. Just that margin for error didn't need to be that low. Again, we're getting into the realms of seeing a lot of these finals. They got, they, they're tight, they're intense. We've seen some amazing matches, Nick, I and mean, we've been sitting together there, and every match seems to be a thriller. <laughs> Does that do my chances nine. of getting back from my mum's Sunday lunch any favours? Uh. <laughs> well, I've got Jonah Bryant playing later. Um, that hit the tin, I thought, that cross court. Yeah, I, I was like you yeah. too. It seemed to hit the lip slightly to me. I'd be very scared for having a look at the impressive again. Neither the has got the hand up, um, and she's got on with it. Lovely lift there. Really impressed with some of the squash they're trying to play. Oh, yeah. Again, that's a lovely drop shot. Yeah, great and Very shot. fair from Amelie as well. We need to call that ball down. No question the sale there, uh, Nick. That's a lovely shot. Poor shot from Ellie though, round mid-court, Nick. Just left it wide open, all four corners we hit, couldn't they? Yeah, I'm wondering whether Amelie there, a little change of tack, whether she's just deciding, OK, nerves are getting better, she's going to put a sort of racket head speed arm through the ball, but yeah. lob that one out, and yeah, I Ellie takes the lead, two games to one now. I think uh, here now, if I was too much, I'd be getting Amelie to uh, reset a little bit, get the ball, of course, slow down a little bit. She just looks a little bit rushed, a bit frantic. Wasn't thinking clearly, um, and I thought Ellie sort of she deserved to win that game. I thought, Nick, did you? I agree. She uh, she played the consistent squash. Her body language was uh, very consistent, very positive. She played sort of the head up. Looked like she's got a can-do attitude. Believes that she can win. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think. I mean, look, obviously two one up. She's a pretty strong favourite now. She's probably a one to three shot. Uh, if they've given both even money for the next two games, evens and evens, as you am sure you know, is that makes it three to one. So she's um, it's going to be tough now. Um, but she's got to sort of play good squash. She's got to keep doing what she's doing, keep intensity. And obviously it's to Amelie now to actually create some pressure, get the ball to the back court, get back in front of Archie in that first game and um, start start getting some points off. And the, the start of this fourth nick is probably imperative, I think. Yeah, interesting here, just seeing Tim Veil in Amelie's corner. Just waving up. Looks like she just needs a three-minute injury break. Looks like some problem with her foot. Currently a... Uh, I don't know if we can see that on the camera, but uh, sh shoes and socks are off. Yeah. And um, not sure what she's waiting for here, but she's not going to get any more than three minutes, so she needs to get a little bit of a hurry on. Um, yeah. So, again, that might influence how this third game starts. I didn't see many problems with movement, Nick, did you? No. Again, you know what it's like something like a little if there's a little blister or something like that it can it can just play on your mind as opposed to it affecting your movement it can just be a bit hesitant but yeah um, 
She doesn't look overly concerned. No. However, that three minutes, as you know, can go very, very quickly. Very so she quickly, needs yeah. to. It's very easy to then go back on, and your thoughts are not really with the match. You're thinking yeah. of something else. Exactly. And she needs to regroup quickly because she's in a bit of trouble at the moment. She needs to really focus on what she's trying to do, not focus on that foot or that injury at all. And that the first say this ball now, Nick, as well, as we both know, will be deader. It's been dead so far, and she's got to make sure. It's also an opportunity to hit a few quick short balls, hit a few winners if you get the opportunity. Um, so I'd be looking to push forward, hit a quick body drop shot uh, short, hit a quick drop shot if you get the chance, and just try and win three or four quick points. Um, vice versa, obviously Ellie's going to be sort of coming out here fast, get a length, and you know she's in the uh, in the in the top seat now. I like the way here Ellie's just getting on with this. She's warming the ball up. She looks pretty focused still. It's just moving ahead later for a minute, Rob. While well, well, I've got a bit of pause in proceedings, um, obviously um, three more finals after this. We've got the boys under 17s, then the girls under 19s, and obviously you've got your third player of the day with Jonah Bryant in the final with Finn. Obviously, two of the members' fantastic achievement this summer for England to win the World Junior Team Championships. Um, you know, first time in 22 years that England won that title. You had two players that you coached, Sam and Jonah, in the team. So I think, first of all, just nice to acknowledge what a great achievement that was for the team. Oh, it's, it's brilliant! You know, forget about me. It's uh, you know about the players, obviously, and uh, you know, it was, I was just so pleased to be able to sort of help in a very, very small way those guys, and just very pleased for them and pleased for England. And it was just nice to see our young players doing well. I know you coach a lot of really top, top juniors as well, um, and we just want to see them do well, don't we, Nick? And compete on the world stage and um, go further, really. Um, Jonah, to me, is one of the biggest talents in the country. Um, he's got a real ability. Um, you know, he's improving all the time. Every time I see him, he seems to get better. But I mean, Finley is an interesting character. He has a lot of ability. Um, obviously, got the World Junior Finals, which was a hell of an achievement as well. And he's, you know, he's, he's he's starting to play the scene at all now. He's he's getting results and playing people in the top hundred, and seems to be doing very well. I think it's going to be a fascinating game today. I mean, obviously, uh, Joan is a bit younger, um, but I'm expecting um, it to be a cracking game. Finn is incredibly fair as well. So again, I think we need to see another match that's uh, going to be playing in a real good spirit. Absolutely. And hopefully some real quality squash. That's yeah. what we're looking for, both of us. I mean, it's exciting. They attack the four corners, both of them, don't they? So, yeah, they uh, do. And the rest. So, uh, all right, we're back on. Let's see how Emily has responded to that uh, little injury break. Um, she looks she's fine there, just kicked her leg a little bit. Foot, yeah, whether, you know, Ellie certainly had the momentum. Things like that can sometimes stunt your momentum. Obviously, a quick error on the first ball there, but... She's got to continue what she's doing, hasn't she? She's, you know, she's very yeah. busy on the tee. You know, shouldn't make many errors. Keeps it nice and tidy. Hit great length, I thought, in that last game. She got a better length, wasn't it, out of the two players? She certainly did. Yeah, she hit a little bit harder. I mean, you see, she hits a little bit harder than uh, Emily. Um, yeah. yeah, that was that was a really scrappy rally, really. I mean, Emily has to get the ball to the back of the court now. It's so important. I mean, that backhand, she really does. It's, it's really good to front there, Nick. Oh. But, you, you know, you, you earn your own look, width. don't you? Yeah, yeah, you earn your look. There's a couple of times now. and uh, If you hit 50 balls in the area, Nick, you're going to get four or five bad bounces. 10% are going to bounce funny. Um, you know, you've got to stop the ball getting there. That's the same thing for Emily. Again, that's another one there, but it's a good length. I didn't say anything there, Nick, did you? But I'm sure I'm sure Emily wouldn't say she hit her unless she did hit her, of course. It's about the first contentious one of the day, that. But um, yeah, look, I, I think obviously it's one of those shows where he didn't feel it, and uh, Emily clearly did. So I mean, I don't think he's wrong. Um, you know, he's been playing in fantastic spirit. But there's no question that. Uh, how many felt she hit her and affected the shot? Bit too close now, back corner sometimes, but he gets. But that is what uh, Amity's got to do. She's got to get it deep and then hit that quick straight drop shot. And yeah. she hasn't been able to do that in the last two games. This lob serve has been annoying me a little bit, Nick, because um, she's probably hit about I don't know, 10 or 12. They haven't hit the side wall now. And, you know, that's a free shot, really. There again, that's a better length. Same in the first game, how effective that uh, has been, but it's, uh, it's definitely dipped in quality. Got to hit the side wall. She'll win the next 20 in the side wall now, of course. Again, there, straight draw. Oh. But that, that to me is a poor shot, because that's a centimetre of the tin. It does not need to be that high. That should be on the foot of the tin. 
because that's an excellent point to happen. Definitely that's noticeable, a hasn't it? That there's a there's serve, serve. there you go. So it's noticeable, isn't it? Now she's even that one, she got it back. But, but look how last, simple it is, mate. Yeah, that's the last one. four or five points have just yeah. gone back. Simple squash, isn't yeah. it? Hit the back corners that and the opportunity there, Nick, for the back straight left. drop. Front left, back right. Three shots in a row, three court squints. That's a bad one. And a lovely whip from Ellie. This is better, much better height, you see there. She's struggling now. That's a Barrington special. Getting that ball out the back corner. Didn't need to go for the Hollywood cross court, Nick. Their straight drop would have been. No, that was absolute madness. She suddenly, sort of suddenly thought she was ramming a shawl there. It's crazy. the game now Nick I think there's four five next three points are critical she needs to put a bird on here now and get that ball to the back and make it really tough that's good good length when she has the ball to the back she does hit a very good ball isn't she Emily, do you think 100% I think like uh, back backhand she gets a little bit flicky doesn't she like yeah, there she does, yeah. Uh, comes off the ball loses the balance a little bit um, again there's that lucky bounce everyone talks about when you hit a great length all the time yeah, rolled out the back wall on the glass court, Nick, as you know yourself. You hit that back wall and crack, it's, it's, it's difficult, runs to the side real quickly, isn't it? At what point does it not become lucky anymore? Well, um, it not becomes lucky when it hits the halfway line, hits the Nick. Yeah. I mean, that one at the back, I don't know any ball hits the back court, but you're the back court, that was down. That was down. I'm sure Ellie wasn't aware of that. Uh, no. she, would, she would have called out, she'd seen it, I'm sure. Yeah. Horrendous serve. It's got in trouble in this rally. He could definitely chase, track the origins of this rally yeah. back to the serve. She turned the pressure around. Any let off the hook there, I think, Nick, really, didn't you? Yeah. To me, this is where Ellie's got to put the pit, uh, push forward now, get in front a little bit, and really sort of pick the pace up. She needs to volley this serve, get it deep, and really try and look some uh, pressure. Oh. Ready to serve. Bad serve again. Got away with it again. Well, again, I like the way Ellie played that rally. You know, she's hit a good length off that, and then she's tried to put the quick drop in. It was the right tactic. Just the execution wasn't quite there. She played on the wrong foot, and two square on the front wall as well. It's that straight drop. I mean, again, Nick, that was a foot above the front wall with a tin, and it's still a winner. You know, as you know well know, when you played, you put a lot of those very tight drops in, and it's so hard doing anything on this court, isn't it? Particularly on the glass court, yeah, those side walls can be perhaps a little bit heavier. Oh, you just clunk, a little bit of a lucky one there, but yeah, you just clunk your racket if you get yeah. running it into the floorboard, yeah. then into the side wall. The number of winners you can get, yeah. it doesn't have to be the margin on the front wall. I'm always telling my players, never aim for nick. You know, if you hit the nick, you've been going for the straight drop, if you hit the nick, it's a bonus. If you aim for nick, you're going to hit a lot of side walls, it's going to pop out. Very, very good, that from Emily. She up to game. I mean, obviously made that little break help to Nick there. Maybe that injury break where she got herself to possibly just you know, reset her a bit. She collect her thoughts. I was noticeable you know, even though she had that injury, she she actually seemed more relaxed than she was in the game before uh, about she it. Did, so I perhaps thought. it just yeah. she was laughing yeah. and she was took her mind off yeah. it. Um, so actually a little bit more intense in between the yeah. games currently. But um, that game just sort of reminds you about what a simple game squash is when yeah. done well. Yeah. You know, there was nothing, nothing complicated. complicated it took a great amount of skill to execute it, don't yeah. get me wrong, because it's easy to sit up yeah. here, two old farts, you know, and we're, uh, and we're saying, oh, well, that was, wasn't that so easy. But the execution is the difficult part. But in terms of what she did tactically, she hit the back corners and she played a straight drop. Yeah. And it was almost, as, you know, 90% of it was that and then an occasional bit of variation on the back yeah. of that. I, mean, I think the same in any sport. I watch a lot of sports, Nick, as you know, and betting on them and stuff. And any sport played well looks simple. Mm -hmm. And actually, the skill is making difficult things look simple. Of and Emily there made it look very simple. She got the ball to the court. She hit some good lines. And she made it look very easy. And the game becomes easy then. It does become a lot easier. Um, you, you don't need to do lots of, sort of fancy shots. Three wall boast nicks and triple boast and things. And, you know, it's, it's the simple things done well. And then the occasional variety added into that is when it becomes very difficult for an opponent. Um, it's going to be an interesting start now because I think Ellie again has got a. She probably lost a length a little bit there, Nick, I'd say. Absolutely. And yeah. I think Emily got in front of her. Yeah, and she came didn't back to, to her that, that sort of gut feeling that we had that 
perhaps at this stage in their careers, you know, when Amelie plays her absolute best, she's probably, you know, it's probably a 60-40, 70-30 match yep. in her favour. But as soon as she dips her level, then, you know, Ellie's the most consistent player. Yeah, so agreed. Probably a combination. Ellie dropped off by 10%, Amelie up to her game. And all of a sudden, here we are in a fifth. Who do you fancy, Nick? To win the match now. I think it's in Amelie's hands. You know, we saw that we saw there. If, if she gets it right, you the think question. She's going to win. <laughs> so if she gets it. If she gets she it gets right. It wrong, she won't. If she gets it wrong, she's going to win. You know, Ellie's, Ellie. I think she's going to chip away. Yeah. But I think you that Amelie's. One now, one I think Amelie's going to. Amelie's going to come through yeah. in five. Is my prediction. It's another. It's look. It's another five-game thriller, isn't it? It's, it's just Again, another yeah. example of the girls doing really well. Really impressive. You know, both these girls, young girls, I can see lots of that's a lovely shot as well. She's got it, she's got it. Is that a let? That's definitely a let, it should be. Ooh. Yeah, so that's a poor decision. I had a feeling that, that was gonna happen just because of the the angle that she came in at yeah. and almost it surprised her that the ball came back. So I think you're yeah. right. It I think John was looking at his own movement there, not Amelie's. I mean uh, obviously I think John would have got that back, but uh, um, Amelie would definitely got that back hundred percent. In PSA, Nick, as you know, that could be a stroke these days. Wouldn't oh, be far off. Don't get me started, Rob. <laughs> you were bang right. It was a let. It shouldn't have been a stroke, but it was um, it was close. Yeah, like hand out strokes like uh, confetti. These That's a days. great length. That's a great length there. I think I'd retired at 25 in the current game just because my head would have exploded. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't blame you, Nick. It's a straight. We want to be the going about squashing and watching these girls play. It's all about squash. You know, we haven't really had any contentious decisions yet. No. And um, even John's managed to do a decent job so far. I think just from your angle, it does look like John is refing. He is the assessor. He's assessor. He's assessing. assessing. Yeah. Okay. He's uh, so he's going to be uh, he's going to be dissecting John, it. Doing a great job. That's a lovely shot there. I like the footwork there, Nick. She, she got her feet, so she hit. She hit uh, front left, um, back right, and, and back left. And Ellie couldn't cover all three corners. Well, she, very simple. In that fourth game, she actually won two or three Again, points with the cross court, didn't she? As well, yep. Amelie so from she the had front to cover left. That. So yeah, she covered that one, and then inside out straight, isn't it? She's playing well now. Uh, her length's got better. She's playing the right shot, at the right time, and then a good drop shot. Again, oh. simple drop shot. Yeah. Tired movement there, Nick. I thought, really. Yeah, really a little bit movement. now. Look, I feel for her because she's had a, you know, she's come back from two love yesterday, and she's, she's got every right to be a little bit tired. She's done a lot of work, um, you know, but she's she's trying very very hard still. I mean, she's still fighting, and I love that fighting spirit. Ooh, she anticipated the cross court there, did well to get it back straight. That's a lovely shot. Lovely shot, that is beautiful. She has some great head speed on yeah. that back, and she really she drives through the ball. She's great really lines. good. It's funny, someone like Tesney is very, very strong on that backhand side, isn't it? Really good line on that backhand. She gets very balanced on it as well. The racket comes through very straight. Then she came the racket down there like that, just managed to lift it. She does a lot of things very, very well. There's huge errors improving here. I can see this girl getting better and better at both of them. Again, that's that lovely length. And again, a little drop shot well played. Nice pattern to play here, Nick. We talk about patterns, but there's been some lovely patterns. I mean, corner to corner. Doesn't need to do that, Nick. It's a poor shot, that cross court. Play. Straight drop would have done the job, wouldn't it? I was going to talk about that just at the end of last game. I said about that simple squash. You've, you've got to be, you've got to sometimes just be prepared that to enjoy the simple squash. Yep. You know, it's almost as if she sort of got bored with playing yep. the straight drop she there. She didn't need to do that. I've got to do something yeah. clever. But you've got to enjoy those simplicity uh, moments. You know, enjoy the simplicity of the straight drop. What she's doing now is perfect. She's played, she's played fantastically well this uh, fifth, and Ellie's been able to do a lot really. Um, you know, she needs to use a bit more height, get all the back. She's, she's got to stop behind her. She's barely been in front of this game at all. And you're absolutely bang on. She's got a good engine, I'd say, Emily, with you, Nick. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, last time I saw her play before lockdown, she was a completely different build, but she always had that tenacity. Yeah. She was always... Uh, sure. Was she quick, Nick? 
Yeah, always very fast. And one yeah. thing I've been always been impressed with Emily is she's always played up age groups. So she's yeah. always every time I've seen her, she's always been. I didn't realise, for example, she was still in the under 17 now because she's always yeah. in the under 19. She's yeah. always uh, playing the older girls. She's played Asia a number yeah. of times. So she's going to be strong. You know, very she's quick on be that ball. Right there, pace. front left, Very quick on that ball. You know, hitting single space. No, I agree with you completely. I mean, she's. Uh, I've met her off the court, and she's a very sweet girl, lovely girl. But she's. Um, there's a real tiger inside. I think. Yeah, she's got a great attitude. Um, she's a winner, and you can see it. And so is Ellie, obviously. Been fantastic as well. I have to comment coming from the Isle of Wight. Uh, can't have been easier yeah. to sort of start squash. I know she comes across on the ferry to Southampton to Leon Solar. Yes, yeah, Tim was there for the session. Takes some good dedication that from a very yeah. young age. Well, there's only about six people playing the Isle of Wight, aren't there? So I mean, you know, she's, it's, she's done brilliantly well. Um, it's great when you get people from Jersey and Isle of Wight and mm. Guernsey and these sort of places. It's uh, it's brilliant. Um, you know, if you have, and of course she's had to work hard to, to keep playing squash, like you say, having to get ferries over to play and things and get coaching. I know yeah, Tom's yeah. side. That was a lovely finish, Ronnie. Lovely, lovely set finish like that. Perfect backhand drop shot. Wrist nice and open. Use the Look at the two girls there embracing, which is really nice to see. Um, Eddie can. She's been very proud of the performance, I think. Nick. Um, I think she was very proud of the tournament, as she's said, first time in a major final, 3-2. Um, um, she got a little bit outplayed at the end, but she kept fighting to last point, didn't she? And it's quite a lot of hope for the future there, Nick. Yeah, that last rally was probably a snapshot of what happened in the last yeah. two games, didn't she? Sort of the serve improved, basic length improved, and then that straight drop started to fire. Yeah. And a uh, little bit of work, perhaps that tough semi-final as well, yeah. just got into the legs of Ellie. Um, but also the quality, not taking absolutely nothing away from the quality of Amelie that came yeah. through in that fourth and fifth. I really enjoyed watching it, Nick, actually. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to watch that and see a game like that. I've enjoyed all the matches. And, um, yeah, thank you for your input as well. It was very interesting. I enjoyed that. Straight back in. There's no rest of the wicked. They're back this, in now for the, the boys, uh, boys under 17 final. Boys under 17 final. I think, um, who's joining you this one, Nick? Um, I think we're back on with uh, Daniel on this one. Okay. Daniel, is Daniel here? Yes, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, look, thanks very much, Nick. I appreciated that, and uh, good to see you as always. We've had a good day together, and um, we'll, we'll talk after these matches, and good luck with the rest of them. Thank you very much. Cheers, Rob. Thanks for joining.
and welcome back everybody it's me daniel again back at the british national junior championships finals day we've just seen a very exciting match between emily hayworth and ellie breach but now we're on to the boys under 17 final between alex broadbridge and archie turnbull and uh, still next to me nick matthew hi nick I How see you've got your, your notebook uh, ready. Got the notebook ready, yeah. Love a good start, I do. Um, yeah, we've got uh, Arch Tur Turnbull from Wales, 3-4 seed there in the white shirt. Coached by Nick Burt, who I actually played myself in the juniors many years ago, part of the Welsh national team. And he's had some battles in this event. He, um, he came through a tough semi-final yesterday with Dylan Roberts. Got some revenge actually on Dylan Roberts. He lost to him this summer in the Dutch Junior Open. Got some revenge yesterday, 12-10 in the fifth. And he also had a 11-8 in the fifth in the quarterfinal as well against Oliver Culture Porter. So interesting to see how his legs are shaping up today, Archie Turnbull, after two tough five setters. And then on the left hand side in the blue shirt we have Alex Broadbridge, another one coached by Tim Vale, who's obviously just had the uh, under 17 girls victory in Amelie Hayworth. And Alex has come through without dropping a game so far. So uh, top seed, slightly fresher, but let's see how this match pans out. Yeah, well, I've seen both of the guy these guys play, uh, play on this court. And I must say that. Uh, Archie strikes me as a real tournament fighter. Um, al already with the 3-2 in his legs, but he will he will be able to do that today as well. Yeah, and both of these players have got pedigree. You know, Archie won the boys under 15s last year at this tournament, and um, Alex won the boys under 13s in, in 2019. So they they're both comfortable in these big finals and. I think what we're seeing now is, is players who uh, have played on this court throughout the event have started to get comfortable on it. So you can see that from the first rallies. They've got the pace of the length. They're not overhitting it. As we said before, this court does tempt you to sort of sometimes overhit the ball, whack through it, open up the front a little bit too early with that boast. But these two are just finding that medium tempo at the moment. And... Uh, just as Archie forces one there, the old commentator's cursed. But, you know, Alex <laughs> certainly straight away has just found his tempo. He doesn't play too fast, Alex. He likes to play that sort of medium three-quarter pace, really smooth mover, early racket preparation, and uh, chips the ball up and down the wall, certainly at the beginning of the matches, and really finds his, his base game before moving on. And big difference with this age group now is, like I said, these players have played a few matches on this court whereas the younger players had all been playing across at Hallamshire so this was their first time on this court so you could sometimes see a combination of the nerves and getting used to the court the first game was a bit scrappy before the match settled down I fully expect this one to settle early and is there any playing history between these these boys as well not got any history I think um Obviously, they are you know, really aware of each other. Um, Alex is part of that England-Wales rivalry. They've probably played in European team championships, home internationals. You know, um, big factor here is, you know, Alex would have done his homework. He'll know that Archie's come off two five setters. So I think you can see straight away he's just he's, he's working his length, but then he's just trying to test his movement to the front with the bows at the right time, and he's setting his stall out to be nice and tough to beat early on. And, just let Archie know that if he's going to beat him, he's got to be prepared to go the length again, another five-setter. And two in a row is hard enough, but to try and get that third one in a row is incredibly tough. You know, a bit of mental fatigue setting in, the obvious physical signs. So Alex has been really solid in these early stages. What I remember from, uh, from Alex from the previous matches I saw from him, is that he, he can keep calm throughout the whole match. Not showing too much emotion about referee's decisions, about playing well or having a couple of balls in his di disadvantage. You can't really read him. Yeah, he's got a good poker face, doesn't he? He, uh, you know, he, he uh, keeps a straight face, doesn't get too emotional, very steady, you know, even tempo uh, in his squash, even tempo in his personality. And... Uh, Start, certainly started the game 
very brightly, very intelligent squash so far. Look at that, you know, nice lift on the serve. He's using that height probably better than any player so far. The pace, he's got his weight of shot, tempo of his swing probably better than I've seen any player get start a match with this court. Some great use of height, great use of all corners. I think it's also quite quite interesting that he, his decisions under under pressure are the simple decisions. You know, he can he can get out of pressure quite easily. I uh, I assume. Yeah, just like, just as you were saying it there, uh, you know, nice change of pace from the cross court lob. Certainly not forcing it. Um, even when he goes short, he's playing with the margin, working the ball into the corners, working the ball into space. And whenever he's under pressure, he uses that height. And as Rob and I said on the last commentary, squash can be a simple game when you uh, choose to make it. So the skill is in the execution, but the tactics can be quite simple, really. And Alex is doing a fantastic job. And that, that tin there is is just a little bit of sort of frustration from Archie wasn't really getting any rewards and, and you just go slightly too low. Your margin drops and that's when you, you creep the tin. But I'd be certainly thinking that, uh, you know, maybe if I was in Archie's corner here that he needs to get a little bit of pace into the game. But that's not an easy thing to do if you've come off two five setters. You know, because physically you might just be a little bit down, but that's a better rally from him. That was a much better rally. Just inject some pace at the right time. Sometimes he might have to go with Alex's pace and pick his moments, but injected there a couple of times, and that's when he, to me, looks his best. Might be a case of just getting the legs sort of moving again in this first game, take this first game on the chin, and then really come out in the second game and. Uh, Try and inject a little bit more at the right time. Oh, well, straight drop was on for Alex there, but over oh. overdid the deep one. But it's a great rally. Seen all four corners in this rally. Then just love that. Just resets the rally whenever it just gets a bit scrappy. Look, he just takes the pace off. Just clipped him on the backswing there, but. Isn't that great quality? And that, that, that's a lot of work that uh, Archie has done there with no result for either player, but like a rally of 40 strokes. Yeah, you, can, you know, mentally when you've come off two five sets, they, those sort of rallies can just chip away at you over a period of time. So, But it's certainly signs that Archie is settling down, you know, signs that he is improving. That was obviously a tight squeeze. Again, the margin wasn't too low. Um, the drop shot was probably a good two, three inches above the tin but it worked into the floorboard first and then into the sidewall you know good old-fashioned floorboard squash as my mate Luke Butterworth will say over in Gre Greenwich he loves that he's patented that one I think floorboard squash that was a great example <laughs> of uh, you know not going for the nick going for that, that front wall floorboard and running it into the sidewall Another sign that you're playing really well is when you're not just finding winners at the front of the court, you're finding them at the back. After all, that's a pretty safe shot, you're not going to make an error on a deep ball. So if you can find winners back there, that's a massive bonus. notice that Alex when he he gets more chances to to finish the rally off but he just keeps pumping it to the back so you have Archie running from the back corner to the center to the back corner to the center which is a really 
Yeah, he's got a threat though, you know. He does he does use the front so to the right amount, so he does at least make his opponent push up and cover it because they know that there's the possibility of him putting up there and then he'll hold them and push them back. You know, he's just got the balance, you know, spectacularly right so far. You know, he's kept it simple, very few errors and he's just in complete control of his own game and the pace that he's playing his own game at. And it's a uh, very mature squash from Alex. Very impressive first game there. But, you know, it's, it's no coincidence. You know, he works hard. Um, I've seen him down um, when we've been touring the country on a couple of the clinics that we had. Um, you know, we had him down at Winchester. Uh, myself and Daryl Selby on one of the tour events he did. And um, I know that he's been playing number one in Surrey Cup men's league for example this season and he played Declan James last week um, oh, did Alex so you know what great experience for a young player to go out there and play someone like Declan who's been top 20 in the world and playing really well this season and you know one of the top top PSA players in the world and you know Alex who's in the boys under 17 he's playing someone like him on a Wednesday night in front of a good crowd proper ref and uh, you can see all those little ingredients got good coach good head on his shoulders no doubt parents it's obviously sister plays sister lost in the semi-final of the girls under 15s all of these things are sort of you know really lead into a, um, a very mature person and a very mature squash player yeah, and, and let's not forget Lucy from the talent pathway uh, management team here in the for England squash absolutely who joined good us team. for a couple of uh, couple of matches in the commentary box the players back on court so let's see how Archie comes out and um, tries to sort of turn the tide a little bit here because um, I wouldn't say it was one way traffic in terms of you know Alex just completely hitting winners and, and outplaying uh, Archie with rocket science. Archie was in every rally but Alex was definitely in control of the tempo. He was weaving his web a little bit like an Ali Farag you know, he was just weaving his web complete control of the tempo and uh, yeah, straight away a little bit more injection of the pace has come into it from Archie because he doesn't want to let Alex settle into this game either. Now that's, that's what I think is the frustrating thing about what happened in the first game for Archie. That Alex did nothing real special for, the, for a spectator. But, but still, that's, the, there, there was but that's, that's, that's incredibly special. I know, I know. <laughs> and what I love about him is he seems to enjoy that. You know, a lot of players, if they've not hit a cross-court nick for five minutes, even if they're winning, they feel like they have to do something, a mizuki or something clever or trickle boast or... You know, he's just doing the simple things time after time well. And, you know, you can see that Archie's trying to get a little bit more on the volley. He's trying to inject the pace. But the problem with that is you can start to force it a little bit more. That as the intensity goes up, that could create a little bit of tension. Occasionally, you can snatch at one or two. And straight away, first two points have been errors. And that's an interesting decision because that could easily have been a no-let. Um, perhaps fair decision there for safety, but... Yeah, actually, it's one of those on PSA that if he'd have reviewed that, Alex was nowhere near his swing and props would have been a no lap. He's just giving um, Archie nothing to feed our physics, so even though the tactic will be to inject pace on it, he can't be impatient got to sometimes just buy his time stay patient and then wait for his moments to inject otherwise you know I think this is going to be uh, a similar story in this game with Alex dictating proceedings and I also know that Alex is quite I say tight, tight to the walls. Yeah, he's just giving, Every time. He's just giving Archie nothing to feed off, is he? I mean, 
he won that rally. He had to earn that. Every single rally that he's winning, he's having to absolutely earn it. And, uh, yeah, that's a sign of a top player. You know, Archie's got a stick in here now. This is a crucial part of the match. You can't afford to go too love down today on the back of two hard five setters. It's just an absolute no, no, no. He cannot go to love down here. So this is a crucial part of the game. I'm always saying to the players that are coach, it's not always the obvious times that are the big, biggest rallies. You know, everyone can see that if it's one or nine all, then it's a big point. Yeah. But there's other times in a match that are really crucial for the momentum. And I would say this is a completely crucial time in this match because if Alex gets head of steam now and goes to love up, it's a long, long, long way back for, for Archie now. change of pace as soon as it goes so fast Alex just lifts and there he goes again oh that was interesting so Archie actually turned the tables on him there he took him on his own game lifted him over his head reset with a lob and then he got the chance to attack so even though you know it's perhaps times he does want to inject pace in the game he's still got to find that variety Sometimes he's got to fight fire with fire. Takes one on their own game at times. And that's now, now when, you, when you're playing at that, that absolute top of the PSA, is, there, is, is your tactics changing like every single point? Or do you try and keep, keep it like up for a couple of points or a game? Or no, I think every player is different, their approach to it. For me, I used to try and simplify it a little bit and I would be just thinking of one key point all the time. And that thing might be, uh, it might be for, for, for five or six rallies, it might be for a full game. Obviously, if it's going well, you stick at it. Um, but just being aware of, you know, trying not to get influenced by winning or losing points. So that, for example, Alex just played a bad shot, Archie put it away. That doesn't mean he has to change his tactics. He just played a bad shot. Yeah. And just recognising the difference between right tactics bad shot uh, versus wrong tactics you know and uh, I think uh, that's the key thing when things are going well or when they're not going well you see people like oh that's not working so I have to change but actually it could be the tactics were right but they're just the quality of shot was not right you know so sometimes I think the hard thing is recognising when to change when to stick at it and um, when you do change, you can't just expect instant rewards, you know. You've got to stick at something just for sort of five, ten minutes before you can expect to see any anything coming from it, you know. At the very highest level, you're not the game happens so fast, you have to work for everything. But so you're not gonna change one thing and just win five points in a row for no reason, you know. So Yeah. But for me, certainly it got to a point where it was more a case of focusing on your own game. What do I want to do rather than worrying too much about them? But then for each person, you maybe had one area that you were just making sure you were keeping them away from if that was a strength. As we see, Alex is really weaving his web in this rally. I said he reminded me a little bit of Ali Farag, the way he sort of controls the pace, works around the volley boast and then picks someone off with a straight drop. It was very Ali Farag-esque, uh, sort of quite languid style, you know. He never gets, like, looks like he's rushed. He always looks like he's in control of the pace. And exactly, that was the, the, the calmness. Very calm. Also in this, this rally, it's like, it was again a like 40-50 stroke rally. But he's, he seems to be there every step of the way, in time. Yeah, very impressive, and again that long rally looks like it took the took the steam out of Archie's legs, and then the straight drop there, he started went to go for it, and there was nothing in the tank, and you know he ended up being a couple of yards away from that one. A 
The best thing about Alex's game, though, is that, yeah, he's in control of the tempo. He's playing sort of more a sort of three-quarter pace game. Lots of soft options, but he never once has gone passive in this match. It's very easy when you're playing in that controlled, calm style. You can start maybe go too far and you can start to push the ball around with no intensity. But every shot he plays is for a reason. You know, even when he plays the high ball, it's for a complete reason. And he has a lot of purpose, uh, a lot of thought. Seems like he's a really good thinker. There's a lot of thought going into every shot. Yeah, and it, the pressure just taking its toll. The last three points went quickly there. Real tough patch in the middle of that game with two or three really long rallies in the mid part of that game, and then he just pulled away. And actually, if you saw that game on paper, 11 3 looks very one sided, but it was actually quite a tough game. And uh, it was only those last three or four points where Archie sort of fell away a little bit. So the pressure told in the end, and uh, going to be a long way back now for the Welsh player. Yeah, I think so too. But I'm very impressed how, uh, how Alex is handling this. Very impressive. And what you said, yeah, the second game is very, very decisive for, for Archie. Coming back from this, it's going to be very, very tough. It's going to be very tough. Nothing's impossible. You know, he's obviously a tough lad, tough competitor. He's come back already a couple of times in this event. But, uh, yeah, uh, against a man in form, the top seed, this is a, a big, big task now. Um, we've got to take these things one thing at a time. You know, one thing's for certain. If he, if he sees this as, oh, my gosh, I'm 2-0 down, I've got to win three games, I think he's got no chance. You know, he's got to break this down into sort of small, bite-sized pieces. You know, right, so can I start this game well? Can I stay in the game? Can I maybe win this? Can I get my nose in front in this game? Can I be the first one to five in this game? You know, can I then go on? Can I sneak the third game? If I sneak the third game, then I'm right back in this. Um, you know, sometimes players when they're 2-0 down are, are guilty about thinking about the whole mountain that they have to climb, right? But you only need to get to that next true marker. Yeah. You know, when you're tired and you're out on a run, go to the next lamppost, push to the next lamppost, push to the post box, push to the bin. You know, you're not thinking about the rest of the 5K that you've still got to do. You know, you've got to break it down into 100 metres at a time. And that's what he's got to do right now. Take this match in little chunks. And then there's a chance. Easy stroke, to my liking. Notice he's got um, on the back and on the front and the back actually of Alex Broadbridge's shirt. He looks like he's sponsored by Squash Mind, who is. Uh, the former South African player Jesse Engelbrecht's company. Uh, he does a lot with PSA, um, squash skills on the mental side of the game. And, oh, cool. uh, I think I saw him play at the World Masters in Poland. Possibly. Um, but yeah, he's very, always fascinating to talk to Jesse. You know, he's very good on the mental aspect of the game. And, you know, if he works with Alex, you can, you can already see. Um, know whether that's a sort of I don't know Alex for enough years to know whether that's always been a thing where he's very calm that's natural to him or whether that's something that Jesse's worked on but either way not a bad person to have in your corner I think with, with the cycle a great lesson for any junior player there you know everyone seems to have a coach 
who's yeah. helping them with their squash. But not many players are prepared to sort of say, okay, let me work with a, a psychologist, you know. It's perhaps only something that players do when something's not going well. So, right, I have this tendency to have a temper. I keep breaking my rackets. I keep getting annoyed. I keep getting a bit tense. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, I'll go work with a sports psychologist then. But what about just working with a sports psychologist even if things are going really well? You know, all it is is a mind coach. Essentially, it's a mind coach. Yeah. You don't, you don't go and see your squash coach when things are only going badly. You see your squash coach every week consistently. So... You know, the same should be the case with a physical coach, the same should be the case with a mental coach, but I don't think it's probably very common at the junior level. So perhaps that's something where he's... Uh, How did you do that in your... Head of the game, yeah. Your professional time. We were very lucky. I always had a coach throughout my um, professional career, a mental coach, but, you know, in, in the junior days, um, you know, maybe it was one of those things that you saw it are... If everything's going well, I don't need to see somebody. But if I've got a few problems, then I might need to see someone. And I think that it wasn't until I was a, a senior athlete that I realised that it's the same as a, a squash coach. You need to see them regularly, even if things are going well, you know, because you're always working on something that you can improve. And um, great to see. Oh, a lovely hold there on the backhand from Archie. We're just getting no joys. He's throwing some good stuff at Alex. He's just like a sponge. Need to nickname him the sponge. <laughs> I kind of dig that nickname for him. Sorry? I kind of dig that nickname for him. Yeah, one for Joey he, Barrington when he comes, when he's older and he's on Squash TV. We'll tell Joey that we've already got one for Alex. <laughs> oh, wow. Brilliant squash. Fantastic squash from both players there, Archie. You know, that's got to be the frustration for him. He's, he's putting together some really good squash, but, you know, Alex is just equal to everything that he does and then uh, just picks him off at the end with a straight drop. Clip the tin, I think. Yeah, it was wasn't an amazing reaction. Yeah, it was down. <laughs> yeah, definitely clip the tin there. I think uh, Archie's head was obviously turned the other way. I didn't expect the ball to come, but it did. Uh, did just clip the top. Oh, wow. He, he's even here. A back wall post. Drop shot winner. And he's, uh, he's, he's pretty straight faced, isn't he, Alex? But even. I think I saw a little smile there. Even <laughs> Alex had a little smile at that one. I mean, that's, I've, I've seen a lot in all my sort of 30 plus years watching squash, but that's the first for me. A back wall post, drop shot winner. Incredible. Made me twitch there. That backhand boast. My <laughs> knees went sideways there. He, uh, it's a good job I'm not on there. Otherwise, I'd have tripped over at that one. But he's still there, isn't he? He's uh, still, weaving, still weaving his web. He's got Archie tangled in his web, hasn't he, at the moment. That went out, but he's not too concerned. Just get some with it. Oh, it's good pressure. A3, we're nearing the end. And again, similar story as the second game. Archie put a good, some good patches together in the middle where he's sort of really emptying his tank, throwing everything he can at uh, Alex. You know, he's certainly not given in, you know, he's, he's kept fighting, but, you know, it's, the work is just taking its toll in the end. I'd, I'd love to actually see the stats on this match, actually, how many unforced errors Alex has made, because I think it'd be very low, you know, no more than. Two, three, perhaps in the first game. Very few. Oh, 
that's some mental fatigue there kicking in. Leg fatigue as well, I see. Yeah. I think those quads deserve a good massage tomorrow. He's done himself proud. Obviously got good ped pedigree. Won the under-15 title last year, so that will mean that he's got another year in this event. So great effort to make the final in your first year in the age group. So he can be really proud. We're not, right, we're, I guess, writing him off. It's match ball now, but you know he, he'll he'll definitely uh, definitely be back for more. Had a great win in the semi-final against Dylan Roberts, who I know well, coached by good friend Ben Ford down in Kent. And uh, it's just been an incredibly consistent performance, probably the best performance of the day that I've certainly witnessed so far from Alex. Very professional performance for such a young player. And that one goes down. So the sponge, I hope he likes it. The sponge takes it. So he wins the boys under 17 final from Alex Broadbridge, uh, no, Alex Broadbridge wins it from Archie Turnbull. And we are going to prepare ourselves for the next match, the girls under 19 final between, well, it's two big names, Tori Malik and uh, Asia Harris, both uh, already PSA players winning tournaments. Um, aren't you the coach of Asia? Yeah, these two normally have a good feisty one. So uh, the team talk to Asia's been, you know, every match so far today has been exemplary in terms of player behaviour. Um, sometimes these two, through, you know, no, no individual at fault, but two tall girls, both like to hit hard, both like to get on the volley. So there's, exactly, yeah. there's been known to be a few traffic problems that these two have played in the past. So, you know, the, the talk to Asia today was a little bit, not about winning or losing, was just about, you know, can you win that battle in yourself in terms of, you know, keeping your your behaviour level, keeping your attitude right, you know, not getting involved in this tit for tat, um, lets and strokes, and if the quality is good enough, the referee doesn't get involved, and that's what I want to exactly. see from Asia today, yeah. uh, win or lose. So I'll join you for the under-19 final, and uh, uh, I'll go into a yeah. different hot seat for this next match. Good luck. We will be enjoying it. Thank you very much. Nick Matthew, we will see you later. And in the meantime, I'm going to have a little coffee and water break. Uh, and we will see you shortly. Goodbye.
and welcome back everybody to the British National Youth Championships final day we're up for the girls under 19 final between Tori Malik and Asia Harris Asia already on court and with me here on top of the stands again Lucy how are you I'm good thank you how are you long day well here. I had to run up these stairs to get in my place in time so I'm a little bit out of breath so you can tell me everything you know about these two competitors okay well brief overview of what I know they've both been part of our pathway for a long time both at the top of their game at the moment competing on the PSA world tour as well um, in challenger events and they've had a few tough matches between them in the past and I'm really not too sure where I'd put my money if you ask me right now so we'll see how we go but I think we're in definitely in for a treat and we're on the way almost Both these ladies are, of course, also known on the PSA circuit. So we have some absolute top scores on our hands now. I think they'll both be wanting to get a good start here and try and take an early lead. Just now we were talking with uh, Nick Matthew, HS coach, and he uh, he told her to to keep calm despite what happens on court. There's going to be a lot of traffic because we have two tall girls on our hand. And there's bound to be some traffic, but she should not be influenced too much about all the lead strokes situations and referee decisions about them. Just keep her head cool, play her game. Yep, definitely. You know, we, we had this conversation earlier about how decisions can impact players, and I think that's really excellent advice from Nick Matthews, who's experienced it himself, obviously, having to deal with decisions that go your way, don't go your way, but keeping you cool and trying to just focus on the squash is key. So we'll, we will see how both of them do in that department today. Great fast bows there. Asia Harris. Who seems very focused to me by the way. Yeah, I think they've both had their, their eye on this match since since they entered probably. You know seeded seeds have gone to correctly. Tory seeded one, Asia two. Yes, that's true. So when you're seeded to reach the final, you do always try and think ahead, even though you've got a long, long road to get there. But they've been successful, so. I think Tori won the event last year, right? I'm not sure about last year, but Tori won the British um, Junior Open earlier this year for the under 19s. Yes, we, we were there. At the British Junior Open, yes. I think Asia told us when she was with us l yesterday that this uh, this is her last chance this year, so she's probably 18. Asia's still 17 at the moment, whereas Tori is 18, so depending where Asia is, uh, she could be here next year. I think she was talking about the British Junior Open. She can play it one more time in, I think, it's January. Yeah, that, would, and then make after that, that would make sense. Yes. Okay, we're back. Yeah. 
I did think that one clipped the top of the tin, so... You you did think or didn't? Did. Uh, you did think. Yeah, I, I, I thought so as well. Had a funny sound to it as well. Yeah. It's quite helpful having that microphone on the court. So we can hear it when it does clip the tin. Just touched out up there. Good pressure from Tori. some uh, on-court acrobatics there to avoid accidents. It was a good attempt at clearance, but unfortunately still a stroke. Quite even in this first game, both of them taking some time to settle into it and find yeah, their line and target. I think I would have expected that as well. Yeah. Nobody wants to really try and do anything special or crazy at this stage. You want to calm your nerves and Ooh. just find your find your feet in the first game. Unless you get the opportunity for a kill shot like that. <laughs> you might as well take it. Absolutely. But you don't want that to happen. No. I think she wanted to reply there too quickly. It's all about finding the right opportunity like you said, isn't it? Nice and powerful line there on the backhand side. Stays in Tori's slipstream there. in between serves. Dial yeah. breaks. Both taking the time. We'll see if that starts to irritate any yeah. of them as we go through. Especially when one of them has more of a lead. Sorry. It's a good decision. The ball was short. has to do with the line. Yeah. It's a very popular explanation with the refs. The line. You have to reward the player that's almost sent their opponent off the line and then even if they're trying to get back, you know, it's that hold. Yeah. quite a few decisions in this first game. First game ball to Toro.
Well, luckily for us, the, the referee is also getting the chance to participate in the game a little bit. Tested for his referee knowledge. Yep. Oh. Always going to be a testing match for any referee, I think. But they're in capable hands. So two mistakes there, and Asia's managed to get level again. Ten up. Hope it's nothing serious. Referee just checking. It's an unfortunate slip there. Good play on. Yeah, she is playing with some sort of bandage on the inside of her left leg. Don't know exactly what that means, but might indicate some. Yeah, it looks like she's got a bit of tape there, so perhaps a muscle injury or slight pull maybe, but doesn't seem to be impacting her too much at the moment. And clipped the tin. I think Asia was keen to, to keep the play moving there and perhaps went for an opportunity too soon. Trying to close out this first game. Asia moving Tori around the court really well there and opening that opportunity yeah, and took it that time. She's got momentum at this point, I yep. would say. Oh. That's a fantastic shot by Tori. What a response. There was a weird decision. Sometimes difficult, isn't it, to see a ball pop up like that, and and sometimes yeah. you've got too much time. You don't know which which shot to take, but unfortunately, that one was definitely the wrong choice. And there's a level again. Victoria's having some some good outcomes using that front right corner on the kill. Yeah, true. She had uh, like three or four points, or set up for points in that in that same corner. Yeah, she's really found found her accuracy there, and she's she, you're right. She's had a few points out of it. So see if it keeps working for her. Almost the same there with the out. backhand to take the first game. Yeah, and what a great game this was. Very exciting. Both ladies 
had gained balls, and I think at least two or three. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a pretty good matchup, uh, I must say. Definitely feels quite tense here because they are very level. So, be interesting now to see if any, either of them can pull away a little bit or try and get that gap from early on, like like we discussed earlier. Focus on getting a bit of a buffer so they can start really putting their shots in, taking their confidence and. Uh, and, th and though I think we have two tall ladies on court like power play, I think I see some different play styles uh, going on there. Yeah, I, it's I, thi I think Tori is a very fluent mover. She moves very easily, doesn't waste too much uh, uh, energy on that. But I th in Asia a little bit more, but Asia is a little bit more comf comfortable with, with hitting hard and power play. Yeah, that fast pace I think Asia's used to playing at. If you think about where where she trains, who she's on court with, you know, in the, the Nick Matthew Academy, she's she's playing with a lot of the male players as well, so you do learn to play at high intensity, and I think you can see that in in Asia's game. Tori, yes, I think a little bit more more clinical, uses her height a little bit better, but like you say, a fluid mover, and therefore we are not seeing too much traffic, which I was a little worried about to begin with, but hopefully it stays this way, and they can keep up the good squash, and, and that's the main thing. Yeah, but uh, for everybody uh, looking looking at home, we have a, a a full crowd here on the side of the court, behind the court. Every seat is taken. The balconies are full. So there's quite some... Uh, there's a good finale atmosphere, I think. Yeah, it really is. It's so great for everyone to, to get behind and support these players and give them give them a real you know that feeling of playing in the big final I think the crowd really helps that so these these girls will be used to it They'll, they will have played in European tournaments they've represented England so they're used to that pressure of a crowd but it is really nice to see everyone here supporting the squash interesting shot choice there I think she needs to be careful on trying to be too clever early on here so Tori doesn't take too much of a lead. Yeah, that's what we saw in the, in the previous match with uh, Alex Broadbridge against Archie Turnbull. Alex actually did nothing special, nope. which, which made it so special. Very clinical squash and you know, just kept getting the ball back, kept putting it in the right places. And, and there was like, there was a... An for a spectator, it seemed like an even fight, but it was like 11-6, 11-3, 11-3. Oh, wow. Yeah, simple squash, and he, he did it very well. Asia seems to be bothered a little bit. Yeah, she Three just... Three fast games, in, fast points in a row. Needs to relax a little bit. Not, not worry about the ref and focus on getting her accuracy back. This is the point what, what Nick mentioned, I think. You see in her reaction towards the referee that she's a little bit bothered by it. Yeah, you can always tell in, in the way a player asks or speaks to the referee if they're, if they're bothered or riled up at all. And it's going to be a stroke. Saw again there, straight to Asia and no comments at all there. So she's, you know, got to focus back a little bit there, which is nice to see because she can hit shots like that when she's feeling confident and comfortable. Yeah, and it, it, it can happen every now and then, but you just need to leave it behind you very fast, and that's what she's doing right now. Yeah. I thought it was in as well. I'm not so Tough. sure. It's very difficult. Especially a white ball on yellow lines. It's quite difficult to see. That is a great boast. Five three now. Asia's taken a slight lead. It's 
She wrapped her uh, ankle there. Hopefully she she's all right. She's up quite quickly. Yeah, she, in the last game she also had two falls. I think it's difficult, isn't it? When you do have a slip, it's almost plays on your mind. So when you have another slip in that same area, you're almost very nervous to go in. So hopefully it doesn't impact her too much and she continues moving like she has been. Oh, wow. So well stay in this rally. Oh, it's unlucky. Good fight there from Tori, though. All over the court. Excellent athleticism. Yeah, she managed to get up very fast at three times in a row. There's no chance I'd be getting up if I fell over. It takes me a minute to get up now. <laughs> Yeah, it's the back, it's the knees. <laughs> yeah. It all comes crumbling down a bit. I saw that ball good. So did the ref. Beja read that one where Tori had so much success in the first game on that forehand. It's a good idea. Unfortunately, it just clipped the top of the tin. So six eight, she stays within a two point margin. Yep, not letting her run away with it. Keep fighting. Oh, she fell against the glass wall with her head there. Yeah, that didn't look good. She looks like she's in quite a bit of pain there. Yeah, I can truly imagine. Took quite a big knock getting through and... Somebody get a bag of ice, man. Fell into the wall. Dad, Cameron Malik, just coming onto court to check. don't quite get what Asia was telling there. Who is he talking to? I think there must have been some noise down the front of the court that we can't hear. But the ref has just announced contributed injury break as it was. So Traffic getting through that, that caused that fall, I think. And excuse my English, but I have to translate everything. But contributed injury break means that she inflicted the pain herself. Or no, so contributed means it was no one's direct ah, fault. Okay. So because yeah. there was a trip, um, and they were both involved, but it wasn't it wasn't Tori's fault. It wasn't Asia's self-inflicted movement either. So uh, sorry, it wasn't Tori's self-inflicted by diving or anything. So it's classed as contributed, and yeah, she clear. will get 
an initial 15 minutes. A maximum of 15 minutes, right? It's I believe so. Before she needs to see if she can carry on. Hopefully, she just needs some time to check that there's no main major damage to her head and it takes a few minutes. I can imagine she's got a bit of a headache actually, so... Yeah, it could be a worst case, could be a concussion or something. Yeah. You, you want to have that checked out. But, yeah, maybe it's just uh, the scare falling with your head against the wall. Yeah, no, it can't be pleasant, especially not when you're traveling at pace as well. And I do think that when you have this and you have that little bit of scare after a fall like that and after already three other slips on the floor, you might want to just ease yourself a little bit. You might not be in pain, but just get your, your heart rate down a bit. Yes, definitely. That will be important here because she doesn't want to come, come back on too early and then be tentative in her movement. Exactly. Especially it is a final, an important final. Yeah, and when, when the match has been played at this pace and, you know, we know Asia likes to play at high intensity, so you can't be coming on court if you're not able to to match that and play at the, the pace that exactly. we've just yeah. seen. So it's not, not to rest per se, but just to get your your heart rate down, the scare out of the body. Can't actually see the players right now from where we're sat, so the referees will be keeping an eye on, on the situation and will update the crowd as and when. Hopefully she will be able to continue though because a great match so far. Yeah, I think it will be in uh, everybody's best interest to just keep on playing and uh, enjoy this finale as we have enjoyed the other ones as well. Yeah. For anyone who's recently joined us, we're currently on a contributed injury break for Tori Malik in the girls under-19 final. Tori Malik leads the match with one love. Oh, well, that's in the screen, actually, so... <laughs> <laughs> It's important also for Asia to keep her composure during this time, you know, stay warm as well. So she's back on court now. Just to keep everybody a little bit entertained. I know that Asia told us yesterday she, she's al also playing Holland League. She's signed by my good friend Tony from Scorsese Almere, playing the, the Premier League. It's called Eredivisie. So we will be uh, seeing the likes of her in Holland. Perhaps you could teach her some Dutch. What would you, what would you well, choose to teach Well, I must say, she, she was here yesterday and she has a really English... I, I don't know how... how the, the accents work here in England but half of the time I couldn't really make out I had to really think okay what's <laughs> <laughs> yeah she does if, for anyone that knows Asia she does have a, a real northern accent and I don't want to be mean about it we have the same thing in Holland some people are just if you come from the north or from the south or from the east sometimes if I don't concentrate enough or there's like sound around I cannot understand them as well but I, I really needed to get into Asia's way of speaking <laughs> you, had, you had five games to do that luckily exactly yeah, you <laughs> were on a long match <laughs> together Tori Malik here just coming back onto court so this is a positive sign hopefully she is feeling alright looks like she's fit to continue so we will be back underway with this girls under 19 final once they've warmed the ball up I 
Am I right if that these ladies are in the same national squad as well? Yes, they are. Sorry, I'm just listening oh. there to what you say into the ref. So, a no let given on that last decision. And we'll get back underway. But yes, uh, these two will, will have been on the junior pathway together, probably from a very young age. Tori more recently getting to the, the end of her junior career, so starting to focus on those professional events and upping her training. Oh, nice good ball there. Recently attended one of our senior squads, so good to, to bridge the gap from junior to senior for her. It's a good decision by the ref there. She needs to make more effort to get through. So 8-9, all excitement back in the game. taking the opportunity to put that one away. Slight word from, from the ref there to oh. watch the physical contact. Looks could like you, Could you hear what he was saying? He just asked them to, to watch the physical contact and try and play around each other a little bit better, which I think is fair at this stage after a, a few knocks. That was a double excellent backhand there by Tori. That is the same movement as on the, on the forehand. Yeah. It's like a very short backswing. Takes it in nice and early. Almost Taking catches nice your early. opponent off guard. There she goes again. Really glad she's been able to get back on the court and continue this final. Three yeah. in a row of those yeah. shots. That's she's really found her range there, getting it just above the tin and bouncing twice before the short line. And this is not a PSA height tin here, eh? No. So that does make it difficult when they switch and go to the lower tin. There we go. Three shots in a row, same place. And a good scream of victory there from Tori. Who managed to, to squeeze out the second game as well. Taking a two love lead in this final, but it is very close and we can expect a real fight from Asia in this third game. Yeah, this was pretty impressive, seeing the fact that she fell multiple times. Yeah, as I said, to keep her composure, I think you know, I think she's really matured. Um, over the, the past year or so and to be able to deal with a few knocks a few decisions she might disagree with but to come back on and really keep her head go for those attacking shots still and, and get that win I think was really really good to see and, and a real positive and boy were they working yes that, that last she, she finished off the game with I think three or four of those when it's working keep doing it That's exactly what, must be the mentality there Two love up. Will Asia be able to mentally get her over that? I think if there's anyone who's determined to come back from two love down, it's, it's definitely Asia. So I'm interested to see what fight she brings here. She'll be speaking to Nick at the moment, I'm sure, getting some tactics. 
trying to calm her down and, and get her her mind set now on just taking it point by point and, and building up in this, this third game. Here we go. Gone straight for it again. Exactly. Hard to defend. Yeah, when it's working, that is a fantastic shot. <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't feel like those few slips are putting her off moving into those corners, which is nice, but hopefully... But I must say, she slips a lot. Yeah, hopefully nothing too bad happens. I've already had one scare. Very tight. Well, yeah, it's an obvious goal. It's going to say no questions asked there. Sprint there. Yep, putting in a lot of work. Slightly lucky there, caught the corner of the court, but she'll but take again the slip. It. Maybe she needs new shoes. I think so. Yeah, well, uh, who was it yesterday? Uh, Aisha. Don't know his first name. Abdullah. Abdullah, yeah. yeah. He had some trouble in the left front corner. I yeah. also thought it was his shoes. Well, Asia doesn't seem to have slipped over. No. I think it'll be interesting to see how the, the boys get on in the final next, as there were a few slips in their semi-finals yesterday. Was quite a heavy contact, but the ball did pop out, so the direct yeah. line was through. And when you're moving at such pace, sometimes it is difficult to, to not catch your opponent. I don't think there's anything malicious in that tool. Very nice trade line there. Taking a nice lead in this third game. Excellent serve. Really hard to get those out the corners if you don't step up and volley them. And confidence seems to flow away a bit from Asia. just clearing up there that she played through the interference.
we're playing a lat here for the interference. And yeah, we don't really have like the the replay options, right? No, it's hard to tell what happened there really. Both both players noticeably upset about the impact. But continuing on now. Oh, wow. What a stretch by Harris. Needs to keep calm. 4-8. Still quite a gap. Five eight, slowly, slowly catching the monkey. Sometimes that's what you need. Slowly, slowly. Simple. But that's not what you need at this stage of the game. That was a fault on the serve. Yeah, I think there's some uh, some nerves going on there. 10 court sprints needed. If that was in training. Understandable to have nerves at this stage. Both players just getting on with it now, which is good. Uh, affected a little bit by the referee's decisions, yeah, and all the uh, the interference with with Asia. Yep, and she can't let it impact her too much. But she has now got her first match ball, and three of them, I think. Yep. And it's one in that and corner. And she takes the first one. With her favourite shot. Quite a comprehensive win there for Tori Malik. 3 0. It was a little bit of an angry response when she won it. I think tensions are always going to be high in these two plays, so to get through in. in It'll three. settle down, and she will enjoy the, the moment because she's the righteous winner of this under 19 category and we will uh, be preparing for the next and final match of this day between number one seed Finley Whittington and number two seed Jonah Bryant the boys under 19 final and I think we're up for a treat absolutely I think you know both of these players have got excellent skill as well as fantastic fitness and and movement around the court so this really should be a great match for everyone to watch so stay tuned for it because you, you are as you say in for a treat with some great flair I can imagine if anyone saw some of Finley's shots yesterday yes it was all over the internet take, take on some of James Willstrop's greatest shots and doing them very well actually yeah that was actually a shot of the day maybe the tournament yeah I, I think so at least movement. Well, anyway, Lucy, thank you very much. We've really enjoyed your uh, your presence here in the commentary box the, these last uh, couple of days. Um, you will be making plays for Nick Matthew again for the last match, but uh, we surely hope to see you uh, again. And with a little bit of luck, it will be in February, I hope, with the English juniors. Yep, thank you very much Bob. for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I will be there at the English, so see you there. Okay, goodbye. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Bye.
Welcome back everybody to finals day of the British Nationals Junior Championship. The under 19 boys final between Finley Withington and Jonah Bryant. Um, well, both exceptional players. Finley, we have seen him win the European Championships under 19. We've seen him being runner-up in the World Championships under 19. So this is definitely a great player already. And he, uh, he will be shortly joined on court by Jonah Bryant. Who's also an exceptional player, but who, whose Palmaris I do not have present here. He uh, won a couple of British Junior Championships, I know for sure, in the other age categories. Um, and I think we're uh, we are about to, to to witness a very very exciting match with two very capable and technical players. Hopefully, I will be joined by Nick Matthews shortly. But he is uh, he's here firstly as a coach of Asia Harris, who probably needs some attention after she just lost her final against Tori Malik in the girls under 19 event. Anyway, we're off. And though I expect that both players will probably be feeling the court at the beginning of the game to get comfortable with the court, get comfortable with the playstyle of their opponent. I also think it's going to be the Fast and the Furious Squash Edition. Great drop shot there by Bryant. Put the score to 2-1. All the tactics of the day. Nick Matthews uh, has joined me, put on his headphones. We gave him some volume. And there he is. Nick, yeah. welcome back. Thank you. I'm still out of breath there, actually, from a uh, mad dash between Coach and Asia in that last match and uh, taking the seat up here for the hot seat. I've been really looking forward to this match. I've seen a lot of these two boys this year and really impressed with both of them, so can't wait to have a good battle to end the day. Now, I must say it's uh, very easy to say that you've been waiting for especially this match, but these are two special players. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, first things first, what a great achievement. Me and Rob alluded to it on commentary earlier. What a great achievement for um, these two being part of the England team that won the World Junior Championships, uh, team championships this year, ending uh, about a 22-year 20, wait, I think it was, since the last England team that won it that had James Wilstrop in it uh, in 2000. And as these two, Sam Osborne Wild won the deciding match. Uh, Finn, of course, got to the final of the individual under 19s as well. Lost to a Dutch player. Yes. One of our first uh, Dutch World Championships. Absolutely. After Vanessa Atkinson, by the yeah. way. So, um, but what was interesting in that final, you know, obviously moving, moving on from the brilliance of those two, great achievement being part of that team. But it was, in my opinion, Finn was the favourite going into that final in the World Juniors um, against Rowan. I think so too. Yeah. Um, and I think he underperformed in that final. I think that Rowan really rose to the occasion much better than Finn did. Yeah. Um, so just noticing, you know, the beginning of this match, really Finn, he's an attacking player, you know, but then if your nerves are at their highest, does that mean that sometimes you, you, know, you get a bit edgy on your short game? There's Jonah making the error that time. But yeah, Finn, incredibly attacking player. Both of these players like to use all four corners of the court, but also corners that you might not see as well. They both like, uh, you know, Finn loves a little cross-court drop. Jonah likes a little trickle boast. Uh, they both use the low kills, so they're really showing their opponents eight corners of the court, really, not yeah. just four. Um, 
you can see they're both light as a feather you know they both weigh like about 60 kilos each you know so the cork coverage um, I've seen it the last couple so of days fast, so fast so sharp and I'm also amazed about some of the hard strokes coming from uh, from Jonah because he keeps them very he doesn't seem to over hit those hard balls there's a lot of power in, in a small body like that Anyone prior to the match would have asked you what you think the expected outcome is. What would you have said? I think my money in the bottom fin maybe in four. Just think a little bit more further in his progression in terms of senior squash. You know, he's uh, um, played some PSA tournaments this year, sort of all around the world. I know he's been to Kuwait. Um, you know, Jonas started the PSA as well. They both played... Uh, they both played in Atlanta last week. But, you know, looking at the world rankings, Finn is up at 169, which is his highest, and Jonah's at 266. So, you know, Finn just that little bit further in his progression in terms of playing senior PSA events, which I think might just turn the tide in his favour as the match goes, goes on. I will ask you again when we are, like, in the second or third game. Great pick up there by Finn, staying in the right. Oh. You always want to be the player dominating the play, but if you can show your opponent the ability to, to dig back some of the balls that Finn did in that rally, you always got a chance of forcing an error because your opponent goes lower and lower because you're getting it back, getting it back, and then they go too low and they clip the top of the tin. Yeah. Um, seemed like Jonah got a bit of sweat in his, his glasses there. It's something that he spoke to me about in the past, but um, he said to me he can't wait to be a pro so he doesn't have to wear them anymore. But um, <laughs> now There's actually not a, a lot of juniors that keep on playing with their glasses once they turn... 19, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, back to the squash, and you, know, you can't underestimate that ability to be able to sort of turn defense into attack through your movement, lifting up a good lob, resetting the rally, and then that sort of turning that pressure back onto your opponent, even though just like Finn did exactly there, right, right on cue. Rob had been thinking on that one. It didn't need to be that much above the tin. <laughs> you, know, you think back to some of the olden day matches, you know, mentioned at the start of uh, the day, this court, the first ever glass back in world squash. It's obviously changed now to be a full glass court. A pick up there from Finn. But some of those matches in the early days, the Barrington Hunt, they didn't probably play a drop shot to the front of the court. A little Mizuki there. For about, yeah, for about 20 minutes. Whereas these guys, <laughs> you know, straight in, they're using all of the corners, you know. Every inch of the court is being used from the very first rally. So 
Oh, he's got that slight miss here. This is a tough rally. Oh, wow. So, no that. What an athleticism this is. Yeah, it's a high level of squash, this one. We had expectations that it would be. I think in matches like this, the first game is always a big game, you know, it really sets the tone. Big finals, winning that first game is always sort of crucial, it settles you down. Momentum is with you then. Two easy points Two here. Two easy points, yeah. 7-5 to 9-7. I said if Finn's had one weakness, it's sometimes just going too short too soon. You know, perhaps like people call it a little bit too much junior squash and this rally is an example of it there he went short four times in that rally and Jonah never had to step behind the short line his tee position was so high Finn never stretched the court long at all and then he's gone short again so I'm sure his coach Josh Taylor will be uh, talking to him about that in between games too much around the front now. There's another Masuki Ooh. there. Well, he, he did the windmill the other day, didn't he? Yeah. He did that one where he looked like he was doing samurai sword movements and then he played the drop shot into this and that's two Mizukis. Um Robbo he, he and told me the, that... He know, knows what the crowd wants. Robbo and Tommy banned the player from uh, training the other day for doing a Mizuki in the middle of the training, so I'm not sure what Rob thought of that one. He's not a fan. Yep, third one. Third one. We saw in the girls in the 19 final, Asia Harrison had game balls in both the first and the second and found herself two love down. So let's see whether things are going to repeat themselves here in the boys' final. Boats. I love that, yeah, the little trickle off the back wall there. Great variation. I know it's a shot I've, I've hit with Jonah a couple of times recently. Um, obviously, both these players, Dunlop, but Jonah did a Dunlop road show with me recently down in Bournemouth. And uh, if anything, he sort of overused that trickle boast. Oh, great cross. But that's the first one he's got. That's about the fourth or fifth one he's gone for. He's obviously been lining it up because that's the first winner he's got from it. But he probably, if anything, he, he probably saw an old man like me and he tried to overdo the uh, <laughs> trickle boast. But uh, he certainly saved that one for uh, the right time. I think it's always a good shot when used selectively. What? And up to game ball again. Squeeze the arrows. Jonah Bryanson at the first game, and um, I have to say it was deserved. To be honest, I think um, Finn had some very good patches, but perhaps at times overplayed the front of the court. You know, it's a great saying. One of my favourite sayings: "A strength overdone becomes a weakness," and uh, that was certainly could be used to describe Finn's performance in that first game. Lots of stuff, strength of his around the front. We saw that cross court nick, we saw the Mizuki, two Mizukis. Yeah. But overdid the front of the court, in, uh, in my opinion, in that game and ultimately paid the price. I think so. I think looking back on this game, I would say that a, a couple of Jonas' points were actually mistakes by Finn. Just easy mistakes going to the front. Whereas Jonas' points were made by retrieving a lot of balls and winning the rallies just in a very short uh, summary of, of, of my views 
So two of the um, you know more well-known coaches in the UK scene. Obviously Josh Taylor coaching Finn. Uh, I always love to uh, eavesdrop what's being said in between games. <laughs> you know, I always think it'd be fascinating just to hear what's being said. Uh, Josh talking to Finn. Uh, Josh has moved from his role with England squash now, working uh, a little bit for PSA and also working at the club in Manchester, Cheatham Hill and Fairways Lodge. Uh, got a great setup there with the junior programmes, uh, um, squash in the mosque. Um, you know, in the mosque. Yeah, we've got some, you know, some of the Asian communities in playing. Uh, they also do that in Halifax. Looking to it in Sheffield, it's a great little initiative um, that's happening there. Josh is leading that club program. It looks like a real vibrant, buzzing club. And of course, Jonah uh, is from um, Brighton. Obviously, works down there with his dad, Ross. But uh, you know, spends a lot of time in Birmingham and uh, with Rob Owen and. Word on the street is he'll be moving to Birmingham full time uh, next year when he finishes his A levels to be working with Rob full time. So uh, interesting what's said in between games. Whether we can spot a change in the game plan from either player. Yeah, just overcomplicated that Jonah on that front right um, earlier on in the match when he had Finn on the floor he held it and he just popped in a straight drop winner and that time he changed his mind last minute and nothing good happens when you change your mind last minute rarely something good happens you know he almost got that you know that, I think that shows how good his movement is that he was nowhere near that and he almost got it but um, really good fair play calling that one yeah, I will say it again. I love the fair play levels of all these juniors. Oh my god. Bad error coming there from the racket of uh, Finley Withington. Again, good call on the pick up. And it's amazing again how quickly the ball's deadened off in this match. Perhaps a, um, a follow up of the ball being thrown into all the corners of the court in that first game and a long first game as well, obviously. That the ball is really, both players really struggling to get it through to the back of the court now. And the front of the court is really being overused. It's a little bit better for both players. Much better at the rally patient build up now. That's the third error in four rallies from Finn. Yeah, he seems to be making a lot more mistakes than Jonah. This is what I alluded to in the World ones. Junior Final as well. That um, you know there was, uh, I think Rowan certainly played the occasion better. He looked like he was the PSA player, and Finn was still a junior at that moment in time. You know, you know the way he played mentally, I was really impressed. And you know, Finn's showing signs of not having learnt from that experience now. You know, he seems to know one way of playing, which is to attack, and if that doesn't work, he carries on doing it. Um, so I really want to see a little bit more mature performance. He's going to have to dig in. He's going to have to get his length going better. He's going to have to mentally be prepared to uh, to battle here because Joan has definitely got the bit between his teeth, you know. So even though that one, great, great reaction shot. But it was exactly that. It was a reaction shot. It's not like he built the rally through pressure. Yeah. It, just, it, was a, it was a winner off his toes. Great shot. But you've got to think, how am I going to win 33 points?
was a very cheeky shot, by the way. I Hanging mid-air. Uh, it's a very small push. Yeah, the, the, obviously we saw the girls under-19 final being physical. I thought, you know, like, whoa, Jonah just slipped there. I hope he's all right. We saw Tori Malik snip a couple of times. Yeah, and yesterday, uh, Abdallah Aisha as well. Abdullah. Because of the colour of the floor, you can sometimes get those beads of sweat that you don't see are there. And they're almost camouflaged. Yeah, and with these speeds on display by these two boys, extra dangerous. And what you saw yesterday with Abdallah was he was actually a little bit holding back in that corner after making two slips in a row. He still stands. That's good news. Okay. Can he doing exactly what he did yesterday when Abdallah had some trouble in that front corner? He just puts him in there. Put him back straight back in. Yeah, clever play that. I was just thinking the same same thing. Last thing you want to do is have it in your mind that you're going to slip. That hesitation is a killer. Both players sharing the opinion about the state of the, well, at least the floor. Yeah, I wonder if it's um, a case of the the older age groups, you know, longer rallies, more sweat, um, because didn't see anything really in the younger age groups, any slipping or anything, but it was obviously the case in the under-19s yesterday. Yeah, but it was only in one of the under-19s, because yeah. when uh, John was playing Reese Evans. Yeah. was not there. Maybe also because the heat has gone up substantially due to the, yeah. the temperature. Yeah, the temperature, a little bit of humidity has got a little bit sticky in here, there's not much air. But as long as conditions are safe, the players are, is going to be the person who can hold their concentration, keep their head the most. Still seems a little bit off balance right now. Game's definitely got a little bit scrappy since the couple of slips. But momentum, we talk about momentum a lot today, but momentum, particularly in junior squash, seems to be an even bigger thing because the swings seem to be so high and low. Yeah, definitely. But, um, momentum definitely with Finn now in this game. Again, now they seem to be getting a little bit more into the game again. The scrappy situation is behind us, I think. Fingers crossed. Sort of 
moved the wrong way there, Jonah. <laughs> moved to the right hand wall when normal movement would have been to clear to the left. And lost his compass there a little bit. Read that trickle boast. I think everyone in the arena <laughs> read that trickle boast. Even Scott Griffiths sat next to me read that tri trickle boast. <laughs> Complaining about a little bit of humidity now on the glasses, it's all kicking off. You can hear a pin drop just now. Everybody awaiting the next serve. And a couple of game balls saved already. Yeah, it's been a couple of game balls saved. And is this right? Third or fourth game ball in this game for Finn. Out. Oh, did it creep in? Oh, good call. Fair oh, play to Finn. What a fair play there. Great shout. So yeah, on the decision before, obviously, Jonah felt that Finn was in his line to the ball. The referee felt that Jonah should have gone to the ball, not to Finn. So these are the fine margins that, you know, it's like the offside rule. Or is it a penalty in football? So one person thinks it's a penalty, one person doesn't. So the referee's decision is final. There's obviously no reviews in junior squash. So the game continues. Scrappy rally here, Jonah in front. Well straightened. This rally is all over the court again. Oh, oh that was down. The top. Scrambling of the highest quality going on by Finn there. And another game ball to level it up at one all. I think for the neutral, we want to see this one go one all. <laughs> I think so. Perhaps not those people who've got to drive back to Hampshire. Well, my boat to Holland's already been missed, so we might as well make a long night of it. Might as well. Probably a slightly unnecessary warning for contact by the ref. He's game ball down and he was just ensuring that he didn't get a no let that time after the last call, yeah, wasn't exactly. he? That's all, that's all he was doing. There was, there was nothing there, uh, absolutely nothing malicious intended there. Oh. I think so. It was maybe a little bit too easy on four stroke. We've well, got to say then, if he, if he thinks that's a let, then perhaps he should say no let. Perhaps he should say play it. Because. You know, Jonah had the rally under control, should have played it cross court early, and Finn was completely out of position. Slightly edgy cross court drop there by Jonah, let Finn back in the rally. Oh, soft over again. First game ball for Jonah. An unnecessary mistake again, like it's almost overhead. Going for a short ball in. Ah. 
So much like the girls under 19 final, there's that trickle again. He used that well at the end of the first game. Both the first two games going to a tie break. Normal straight would have sufficed. The boss has taken over now with the court wiping. <laughs> when in danger, you get the boss on there. No, oh, but there's the helping troops. Oh, the help comes now. That's the tough to keep the players happy when you're a young lad you feel the pressure when you go on there and they, you know you don't want them to break their ankle and you like show me where the sweat is that's it give him a good hand guys come on I know a guy from our club in Amsterdam he used to go to all the international tournaments as court sweeper they deserve a lot of credit those guys and he, he, Ken he got in Canary, Ken in Canary Wharf is there every year. Oh, that's quick hands. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I said it yesterday. I, I, I will say it again. I'm not... I, I don't believe his running style. I, he reminds me of, of a Jesus Lizard. He can walk on water. He defies gravity sometimes. So fast. Another game ball for a two love lead. Straight length. Oh! And again. Follow through, just stopped on that one. Just the tension creeps into the arm. The demonstration shot straight after, as always. Much like my golf, second ball golf is always a good shot. <laughs> you hit the first one into the out of bounds and then the second one perfectly down the middle. That's what, unfortunately, for Jonah, he did that that time there and followed that up by being over-eager on that tight ball. It was a tight drive from Finn, so he just had to control that one down the wall and look to rebuild. Perhaps not got enough height on that lob. Some of the attacking work from both players is absolutely fantastic, but sometimes the defensive work, I think they could improve on their defensive work. You know, just when they're under pressure, they're always looking to counter. They're not quite getting the ball out and resetting the rally as well as... Uh, I'm sure conditions are tough, but Dyke again there. He's oh, very lucky. And the longer this game goes on, the more you start to think it's going to be crucial towards the outcome. Going the right way for Finn at this point, two love down. But on the other hand, it does go for Jonah, who's two love up. What a game! What a game! I mean, there was some uh, disruption in the like halfway with the slips, but then when it came to the uh, to the big points from eight and on, both had their game balls, both saved their game balls. Yeah, you could see that, you know, that disruption midway through the game definitely played on the minds of both players. You know, you could see them, if anything, even going short even more because they wanted to put the opponent in those awkward lunges, in those awkward positions where they may slip. You know, they weren't comfortable going in. There was a bit of hesitation there. However, sort of putting my, myself in the, sh in the shoes, there are obviously two attacking players, but I'd be thinking, how can I play and limit the potential for those movements that you yeah. don't want to do you know can I keep the ball straight can I keep the ball tight can I keep it high can I keep the good width keep the ball away from my opponent and they're almost both just you said it yourself earlier on you know those matches they went into a lottery 
you know, this one, this game was an exact example of, exactly, a, lot, of yeah. a lottery where both players were attacking the front. The squash was super entertaining. But if I was the person who was on the receiving end of that, I'd be saying, right, how can I change the odds again into my favour? How can I lengthen the rallies? How can I keep the ball away from having to do stupid movements to the front and close the court down a little bit? It's a little bit too open, I think, uh, for my liking. But then having said that, that's Finn's game. So now he's got to really sort of make a decision, you know, is he going to stick or is he going to twist? You know, is he going to stick to his normal style and say, OK, I'm just going to stick to my game plan, that's my game, and just be positive, no hesitation? Or is he going to twist? Is he going to say, right, I've got to rally up, I've got to hit more length, I've got to get the basics better, I've got to close the court down and be a bit more disciplined? And um, I'll be interested to see which route he takes. We're off for the third and possibly final game. But let's hope not. Yeah, I'm not sure many people would have called Jonah to be two love up. Now, I certainly didn't. I had Finn in, Finn in four. I think Do Jonah did well, or does well. Like, increasingly, he, he uses the lob to get out of that left front corner where he slipped. Yeah, he, he, he's trying the right shot. I would say that his execution hasn't yet been... Uh, he's got away with a couple where Finn's uh, hit the error. Um, it's still the right idea, but just like that one, the quality of the shot has not quite been good enough. Uh, but I love his intent. The best thing is that you see the uh, the intent there, and then you know you hope the more you the more you practice that, the more you uh, that happens naturally, the better the quality gets over time. But I do love his mindset that he's trying to lift out. On the generous side, should we say that? Should we say on that one? Generous let. I thought so too. The, the ball was way gone, but he got a uh, little bit of reward for his speed. I think. Yeah, the two of us. We don't know too much about that part of the game, so we'll uh, we'll use our eyes for that one. starting to take control a lot more of the middle in this rally control in the middle yeah interesting there he was in front the whole rally you know um, that black shirt buzzing around in front of the white one it's like two pieces on a chessboard <laughs> I like the symbolism there still plenty of life in this match yet isn't it you get the feeling there's still a long way oh, to go oh I think so I think if Finn manages to to hang on here snits his one game out it's going to be a long it can be a long night evening you just rightly said yourself, uh, Joan has been trying to lift well out of that front left, and that first, that was one of the first times he got involved in trying to over counter, trying yeah. to do a counter drop. And yeah, uh, when you drop, sometimes the racket face can stop. If you clip the side wall, your racket can just stop, and then there's no follow through. Whereas at least if you're trying to lob, you've always got a chance of getting it out of there, right? Because you've got a bigger swing, you lift, there's a bigger follow through, there's more momentum to the swing, and. That's a great lift. Lovely score. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Two love to Jonah, 5-2 to Finn in the third game. There's the three-point spread that you advocated for in the previous match. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. He's, but he's, he's not going to be feeling settled because of the, the fact that he's two games down. You know, much more settling if you've got that three-point lead and, you know, the, the game scores level or you're, you're up in the game. If you're down in the game, you know, you've still got that feeling of it's uneasy. You know, the scoreboard pressure is still against you and uh, things like that can happen. A little bit of immaturity actually in this match from Finn and I mean that in a positive manner. I'm not trying to sort of criticise him but just in terms of shot selection I think that Jonah has actually shown a lot more maturity to his game. You know, Finn's probably been the one who's got, uh, you know, showcased some great artillery, some great attacking weapons. Um, sometimes you don't need to show all of that. You know, you just need to batten down the hatches, just play good basic squash and... Uh, each game, oh. each game got lucky there, but again, great lift, and he uh, he earned his luck. Very much earned his luck there. But uh, every game, there's been sort of four or five soft errors from Finn, lack of concentration, wrong choice of shot, and ultimately to this point, that, that's the difference. Jonah's managed to limit it to one or two, and Finn's error count has been too high. Got away with one, with one there. There's that lob again. Oh, Ouch. one too many that time, but. You could probably trace back the problems in that rally to when he tried to do a little cross-court drop at the front rather than lift out the first time. And he never quite recovered the pressure from that moment. So it's a great spot from you there, Daniel, with the lob from the front. Yeah, well, I must say that in the first match you did the commentary with me. You talked a lot. I, I listen, I learn. So, <laughs> talk too much probably. <laughs> there it is again. Lovely length to reset. Oh, he's starting to get into his legs a bit here now. First time Jonah looked a little bit leggy in the match there. Yeah. Oh, wow. The pressure took its toll there. Yes. Isn't it funny that the, the court is or isn't slippery depending on whether you won the last point or not? <laughs> You know, Finn, the court was unplayable in the first game when Finn was losing but he's quite happy to play on now the court's fine <laughs> the psychology of it all right there was a famous match in the Commonwealth Games and Jonah's the one not happy now there was a famous match in the Commonwealth Games in India in uh, Delhi in 2010 between James Wilstrop and David Palmer and uh, it got really humid late in the evening. There'd been some long matches and they went on really late. It was the quarterfinals and uh, James, I think Palmer was winning two love. James wanted to ch wanted to change the court. He wasn't happy with it. Um, wanted the court swept. He wanted to maybe move onto the back courts. Palmer didn't want to move because he was winning. Then all of a sudden James pulled it back to two all and then Palmer wanted to move courts. <laughs> and James was like, no, the court's fine now. And uh, they ended up finishing it, and James ended up winning 3-2. Three, three, so Great cross-court flick there, sending Finn the wrong way. Showed him a straight drop, turned it across. And I don't want it to come across I'm overly critical about the, uh, you know, the, the unforced errors because it is so exciting to watch. You know, it's very much played in the style of the modern game. Lots around the front, you know, lots of attacking squash. 
you know, I think what you've got to remember is that you've got to still reset the rally. In amongst all this attacking stuff, you've got to still lengthen out the court to the back corners. Use the height, use the deep ball, and then the short balls are even more effective then. Well, I think I can take it from somebody like you. <laughs> the modern game has definitely got faster, though, more around the front. So these two are really, you know... The fact that they can take the ball in just at will to the front of the court, not get discouraged if they make an error. You know, the next rally yeah. will play exactly the same. <laughs> I think if I made five errors in the game, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play to the front of the court again for about ten minutes. But these guys, <laughs> they make an error in the next rally, they just go right back in and they hit a winner, you know. I think at this point, and I'm just basing myself on the last couple of points, but Jonah is showing a little bit of fatigue now. He'll say not, obviously, as you would. You'd, uh, but there was one or two signs, and you know, at this sort of a level, it, it can only be five, ten percent. And you know, against somebody like Finn, who who is dragging you up to the front, you know, he's making the court big for you. Yes, he's made a few too many soft errors in this match, but. He's got a great hold to his swing as well, so he's making you stop your movement every time. You're not just going into the front and you can time your movement, you can read it. You know, he played that one trickle boast that we all read. Uh, but apart from that, his game is very deceptive. He's got many options from the same swing. So those little movements of that, that uncertainty on the tee, that pause in, that stop, that can eat away in the legs over time. And, yeah. Um, yeah, Jonah, just a few signs there. So it'd be interesting... Uh, how he responds, changed his shirt, gone for the navy look. PSA would be giving him a fine for that. In PSA, you have to keep the same colour shirt on for the whole duration of the match. Oh, is that true? Yeah, for the television. If you start in red, you have to finish in red. So you need probably at least three shirts of the same colour. But Jonah looks like he's coming out in navy this time. And Finn's changed as well, just to confuse us even more. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's no good for TV, this guy's. Come on. Give the guys in the Coventry box some chance. Well, lucky we, uh, we do the marking from here sometimes as well. So we can adjust the color in the, in the, in the live stream. I think it's al already been done. <laughs> well, so Jonah, no, uh, it looks like it was navy through the side wall. Uh, sidewall being blue it looked like it was navy but it's actually he's gone from the all black now Finn now in red S Tiger Woods Sunday red <laughs> he won a few tournaments wearing red on a Sunday didn't he isn't there like a thing about red with regards to the other player like like holding a uh, rag for a bull in bullfighting. Yeah, it's meant to be a colour of power. It's meant to be a powerful colour. So uh, we'll see if it see if it works for him. Shot. Lovely volley shot there. Great volley drop there, plucked it out of the air, came round the back of the ball, soft hands, lovely balance. Yes, Jonah slipped, but he was at full stretch there. Don't think he would have got the ball, don't think it influenced the outcome on that occasion.
Yeah, just overdid that lob that time. I always say it's a, it's an absolute cardinal sin to lob out because you're not trying to win the point with that shot. If you lob out, you might as well go for the counter drop because uh, at least you've then got a chance to win the rally. So, you know, when you throw that lob up, I always think that height, obviously as long as you don't go too high, but just getting it up there is more important than getting the perfect width because the perfect width risks going out on the yeah, sidewall. True. And, uh, you know, even when Jonah's... Oh, it's oh. a lovely... Poor serve, wasn't it? But it got punished. But even when Jonah's thrown up less than perfect lob, just the fact that it's been up in the air has forced a couple of errors from Finn. So he doesn't need to play the lob like an attacking shot. Just reset the rally and build again. And that was tight to the microphone there because we got a little pop in our ears. quality game though isn't it great squash you know you have to say that across the board today um, the level obviously British championships but I think on a world level you could say the standards been very high today um, I think so too I very good to see but I must say I've uh, I might be a little bit biased by the fact that I think English squash is always a little bit better than the Dutch squash <laughs> Oh, well, in, there's no doubt in depth, obviously, you know, you had the, the Dutch player Rowan who won the Boys Under-19 Worlds, great achievement, um, but there's no doubt, you know, probably after Egypt, the depth of England squash is probably the, you know, it's fair to say the se second best in the world. Oh, wow. Oh, and he's got oi, it. Oi, oi. Oh, what a rally. What a rally. I've seen quite a lot of Finn play now. He plays Yorkshire League up here for Queen's Halifax. He plays Northwest Counties and Cheatham Hill. Seen a lot of him, and uh, for a relatively small in stature guy, he's got great reach around the middle. I've often sort of said to people who've played him, don't try and hit cross court out of the front because his arm just comes out of nowhere and he intercept like that volley that went across I thought he was past him he just stuck his arm out and hit a winner go go gadget arms yeah but it's just his his reach you know that I think it's a sign of how relaxed he is in his grip you know and his lateral movement being very explosive so sort of comes out of nowhere it's, it's not an obvious thing you know you can see it with a you know uh Mohamed Oshinbagi or a, there's that lob out again two three errors in that one this game we can see it with the big players, the James Wilstrump, the Mohamed El Shabagis, the Mustafa Asal. You can see that wingspan across the middle, but you know I think it's very unique for someone Finn who, like Finn who's smaller in stature to, you know, intercept as well as he does around the middle. Oh, drop shot, Nick! Great moment. Well, he's not going away, is he, Jonah? He's always been down in this game. The last two games, he's always been down on the scoreboard, but he's. He's not lying down. You know, the fact that he's 2-1 up always gives him a sniff. If you just in this next rally, just have a look at the two players sort of on the tee and their poise and their balance. Finn to me looks the same as he did early on in the match with Jonah just starting to sort of be a bit fidgety, a bit wobbly um, maybe that sort of core stability, that stability his legs a little bit of fatigue, I know that's his style anyway, he's a little bit more languid but just on the last lunge there like they're just a little bit lacking yeah. he's starting to just you know, that's something it'll obviously improve as the years go on, as he gets stronger but, you know, just starting to lose that little bit of stability on the lunge and off his first step on the tee, you know, he's starting to sink into his legs a little bit on the tee. There, he saw just that stability. So that's the work that Finn is putting into him. Perhaps what I said at the start, Finn being slightly more experienced in that sort of senior squash side of things on the PSA. Come on, 
Still the junior error creeps in there. <laughs> now, but what you say is true, and I, I also noticed that Jonas' drops are increasingly becoming, uh, getting a little bit higher on the wall. And easier to get for Finn. Definitely just collapsing a little bit on the lunge, Jonah. There, oof, that was a heavy movement. He reset with the lift. He's got to really use his brain now, be intelligent. Shot selection. I mean, unbelievable coverage again. It's more the stability, isn't it? You can see he's still got the speed. To, yeah. to even get close to that one, it's just you can just see him just collapsing on the lunge, just just a fraction. That's a lovely drop shot. Very good point there. Pushing Jonah from left to right in the back. Not using the front of the court, just putting pressure on it. And fourth lob that's gone out. In this game, probably a sign again just so that stability on that last lunge. But moving towards six o'clock here on uh, Sunday, but no one's leaving just yet. Lots of long journeys ahead of people, but everyone's staying to see the end of this fantastic boys under 19 final as we approach the fifth game. The game that was actually scheduled at 20 past three. It's now 20 to 6, but everyone may be uh, utilising that extra hour that we all got in bed last night. <laughs> well, I know these court sweepers do that because they do an excellent job. Down to two all now. And they say, uh, well, I say they say, Jonah Barrington, who officially opened this court in its current form, used to play on it when it was a glass back back in the day, British Open finals, Jeff Hunt, famous matches. He said the two hardest things in squash, to win three love when you're two love up and to win three two when you've come back from two love down. So the first one of those two statements proved true for Jonah when he was two love up. Now let's see about the second one for Finn now that he's come back from two love down and forced a fifth. So what he's actually saying is it's hard to win three games in a row. Could yeah, just one. You could, <laughs> you could say it that way, yeah. I think psychologically, you know, when you when you two love up, you perhaps think that the job's job's been done. You know, you've done the hard bit and the opponent's obviously gonna come out there in their last chance saloon at that point. Yeah. So that one psychology and then also likewise you come back to two all, you might think, Oh, I've done it now, I've got them tired, momentum's with me. And uh, the opponent's going to make a big push again at the start of the fifth. So, uh, uh, But my money now would be on the player with the momentum. Would be with Finn. He's done very well to come back from two love down. And uh, I think Jonah's going to make a big push at the start of this game because he was never in the lead in any of the last two games. I don't remember at any stages of the last two games. So I think he's going to make a big push now to try and get the lead early on and try and hang on to it. 
So there was a little hidden prediction there. Ooh. I mean, that was not a percentage shot, but at two love down in the fifth, you've got to applaud the tonight. <laughs> the uh, him. Temerity of going for that shot. I'm trying to find the right word there. Shot. Did he get that? No, no. Good call again. Both players have called their own pickups in this match, so I'm glad the crowd appreciate that. Jonan jumps out to a two love lead. In now three two up. Wonder if that's going to be the same story for the match itself. Oh. That's so tough. Yeah, you have to win every point like three or four times he every did. time. He did, didn't he? And that, that cross court soft touch drop shot that he played was. I didn't see Finn getting it, but he got it. Point lead. Yeah, I was just uh, allowing the squash just to speak for itself for a minute there. Some, uh, you know, real psychological, physical, tactical, technical battles going out there all at once. And the players may have changed shirts, but that element of sort of physical chess is at play now more than ever. Stays in. It's interesting, halfway the midpoint of the third, the midpoint of the fourth, Finn just started to stretch away. Joan looks a little bit tired. The pressure's about to take its toll, and could that be the same story here in the fourth? Oh, what a that's soft touch that was. the reach there. How does it get? I really love that reaction that he did mid, mid rally. Could have asked for a stroke, didn't do it. But for some reason, the ball came off the record perfectly. First unforced error that in a little while from uh, Finn. 
Just giving Jonah a little bit of a sniff. Back to two points in it. He's fearless taking it in though, making that error. As we said last game, it doesn't deter him from taking it in. He will still take it in. Oh, second one in a row. Great rally, great court coverage from both players. Oh. oh! It's just overdone the flick a little bit in this um, back end of the match. The straight drop was on there. Oh no, we've got a malfunction in the glasses. Do you know juniors bring uh, like a spare set of glasses? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> Asia just ran off at full speed, so maybe she's going to uh, lend Finn some. This looks like he's got a spare pair. There's not going to be any shortage of uh, glasses in the uh, no. in the building. If there's, there's 370 players in this event, so there should be at least 370 pairs of goggles. <laughs> some people will go home already. Maybe they have some in the shop. Yeah. Seven five in the fifth. Big point. is there uh, because they're both attacking the front so much Finn was onto that one he was running forward for the drop so maybe there's been a few times where Jonah could have shown the drop and then snapped it straight put him back to the corner that he just came from that's a awkward movement Joda strides out to the service box. That's what you said. Unbelievable stress there. I did not see where he got that extra 10 centimeters. I mean, when he first hit it, it looks like a good width, right? But he seems to sort of reach out from nowhere to get that. Uh, it's pretty incredible, really. So I think the tactic will be go straight. <laughs> Or lob. So nine seven.
championship within reach. Will he still attack? Will he still go for it? We know the answer to that one. match balls so we've seen a lot of players earlier in the week when they're the ones on match ball they tense up they force it got a feeling that Finn won't affect him quite so much I think he's going to uh, play the same way he's going to attack there we go oh, oh. he's got it Oh, wow. oh my god, man. What a match, what a rally. What a hug. The hug that says it all. Well, that concludes our uh, finals day for the British Junior Championships. Uh, everybody's uh, racing home since we have a delay of about three hours. <laughs> I would uh, like to thank everybody at the tournament organization for, uh, for helping us uh, put this live stream thing together. I would like to thank everybody who has helped us in the commentary box. Uh, for one, Nick Matthew, still sitting next to me. Thank you, Nick. Pleasure. Pleasure. Can I just absolutely say just a, what a fantastic day of squash all round from the very first final. We had our very first under nine competition, you yes. know, through to, uh, you know, a world class under 19 final there all the way through fantastic matches all the way through the day. And, you know, showcasing the very best of the junior game in uh, England squash. Yeah, I, uh, I think you're absolutely right. We've seen 11 finals today that were absolutely worth watching. Um, let me finish my thank you round to also Rob Owen who has joined us, uh, George Porter, Lucy, um, who did I, Term, Archie Turnbull, um, and yeah, we hope to see you again uh, very soon. So uh, everybody, my name is Daniel. I thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>